Oh, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, y'all? Welcome one, welcome all to the Jerkmonger Show. I am your host, the incredibly ultramagnetic Jerkmonger. <laughs> anyway, what's up, guys? Uh, <clears throat> I am uh, testing out a bunch of brushes here today. I bought a set of things that I wanted to check out. I got to do some sketching today for a project. Hey, Shade, how are you, man? Charlie Murphy, what's up? What's up? All right, all right. Um, give me a moment here. All right, guys, what's up? Um, <clears throat> my office is a mess. It is a mess in here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize some of my stuff because I'm just ashamed of myself. I'm actually going to show my screen. He, heck, how's it? Hook Gak? Is that right? Heck Gak? Elia! What's up? All right. So check it out, man. Um, I, I had a, a, an interesting start to my day. <laughs> Just kind of doing some um, some early stuff I have been working on. I'm gonna show it to you guys a uh, little a little uh, sculpture sculpture of my my main character for my story I'm working on with Doug. Um, it's supposed to be a little maquette deal. Shill 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 Indiegogo project. That's right. Go ahead and say it, man. I don't know. You got the thing. You have a very, very artist room. <laughs> Heck, perfect, brother. Right on. Right on. Heck, yak. All right. I'm still um, struggling with Lafayette. What's up, man? I'm still struggling with, uh, with, you know, stuff from. I don't know. I think it's. I really think it's my. Uh, it's the the. Uh, Allergies from everything that's going on right now. We're definitely in that season, and I struggle with that heavily. I've I've, I've always struggled with allergies, and um, there were times when I used to work in the office. I would walk into an office, and I would get these like sneeze attacks, and I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I got a I got a It should have made a, a television show out of me, or I would have been a character in a comedy or something. But anyway, uh, I keep looking back and forth at myself. The weather, uh, it's the it's the allergies, man. It's just here in Tampa. It is ugly. Into his house. What's up, Arthur Brown? That's right. That's right. So, anyways, anyways, anyways. All right. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and switch over to this. I'm going to I'm going to do a couple of superhero poses. They're really designed for a project I'm working on. I really can't talk about it. Um, it's a it's a little side quest I have to go on. Captain Marvel was so so campy, corny script, and in the end, you just don't care for for TJE. I don't know what TJE is. But uh Carpaz, just tell them you you have a time they know the truth. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh let's see. Hail Caesar. Okay, there. All right. So Antonio, you up for uh for jumping in with me? Let me know. Let me know at Kari Press. You can come on to Nasser. I'll, I'll send you guys the link. But anywho, anywho, anyhow, anywho. Anywho, I um, yeah, I just uh, I I was listening to Ethan do his um, his live stream on on uh, <clears throat> on and discussing the situation that happened with Dan Panosian, and I'd like to uh, I'd like to jump in with that if I may. Uh, I mean, I'm sharing my link here, guys. Hopefully, these guys will help me sound better because I sound like garbage. I think I think Nasser is working right now anyway, so I just invited you anyway, regardless. All right. Okay, so that's that. Um, Where is my chat? I lost my chat. There we are. Uh, Sean, tell me, what's up, Elliot? <laughs> That's awesome. 
make my diabetes symptoms worse. Go figure out. Really? Diabetes gets worse with the... Uh, gosh. Anyway, 36 people watching. We're talking about diabetes. So what I want to talk to you guys about is the situation. I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. I just discovered a new uh, YouTuber um, that I think is pretty cool. She's um, something Koza. Uh, I think she's Aggressive Comics is what she is or something like that. Wait, let me see if I find her. Uh, oh, oh, I'm looking that up later. Yeah, aggressive comics. That's it. And uh, I like her. I like her a lot. She used to work for BuzzFeed. And uh, so it's interesting what's going on with that. Papa Kinesu. Hey, Jerk Monger. How you doing, man? Oh, you're off today. Well, I'll send you guys the link. You guys are welcome to jump in. So anyway, <clears throat> it's um, it's just interesting because we're talking about Nasser. There you are. Beep boop. How's it going? I'm, uh, <clears throat> I don't, you know, it's funny. I was okay in the morning and then. I don't know what it is. I think after so much, so many hours of goodness, I get into this whole like, bleh. so I'm jacked up. Yeah, I got a few minutes before I got to get my brother from school, so figured I'd hop on. Yeah, I'm not going to be on for very long either. I'm going to be on for maybe well, maybe an hour, um, but not that long. So it's just to kind of touch base with everybody and 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 chill, chill. Don't be acting ill. No tricks in '86. It's time to bill. Remember that rap song? Nope. I didn't think so. It's from 86. When were you born? 97. You know, I'm going to kick you for making me feel old. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, yeah, man. So did you listen to Ethan's uh, deal? No. Uh, I, I was on the phone. One of my buddies called me, so I, I missed most of it. That's fair. That's fair. It's, uh, it was just an interesting conversation about what's going on with it was started off with with Dan Panosian. You're aware of that situation, right? Oh, yeah. I saw Zach's video on it. Uh, you know, as, as much as I argued with Dan before, uh, I mean, he, he's a good artist and you know, no one de deserves to be attacked by these weirdos. I mean, Dan is a little weird, but I still don't like seeing people get attacked. You know? Right, right, right. Well, that's true. Right. And I mean, that's in the end, that's 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 fair. It, it's uh, I'm gonna switch over to my screen so people can just uh, observe my, not look at my hairline, but my artistic skills. Um, yeah. The, listen, I I I think I've said this before. Um, I don't know if I've said it before online, but um, Dan has always been really really kind to me. He's been a a, a super cool gentleman. Uh, I met him one time at, in L.A. during one of their drink and draws, as a matter of fact. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, I happened to be there for business, and um, he he was super kind to me as a as a you know I was just showing up. I had heard they were going to be doing stuff, so I jump in. I think this is when uh, I think um, Jeff Johnson was heading out. I believe that's he was it was a going away party for him, and uh, he always seemed like a nice guy to me. So, and and I got to meet his family at several shows. His son, and I think I think it's his wife. I want I hate to say, you know, sometimes I don't know these days. Super nice. Um, so it's just another example of what happens when you're on social media and everybody just talks to each other and no one really knows each other. And um, it's easier to complain and 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 criticize, even though we don't really have a good strong sense of where we are all at. So the argument, guys, so if, for those of you who don't know, there was a, a piece of artwork that uh, Panosian had worked on that had a, this is a nice brush, um, who had, that was a, just your average, I mean, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even it's his a normal cover. cover. It was just huh? whatever. Yeah, it was okay. You know, it was, a, I mean, I love his artwork. I've always been really of his. Um, he, he does a good, he, he reminds me, he's like the Starsky of and Hutch. You don't even know who that is, do you? No. Gah. All right, so he draws a lot of his style reminds me a lot of the seventies, eighties comics, but it has this kind of it almost seems like it's it's it notices itself, right? It's it's his work is very uh, self aware that it's a an older style, and um, what I like about his work is that you know he can he he's got a little bit of more Drucker in there, he can do caricatures very well, very well, and I respect that. I'm a big caricature artist guy. Um, so anyway, the point though is that he's not a, he's not a monster by any stretch. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket says, nah, sir, don't know Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jiminy. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. Um, he just outed his mistress. <laughs> That's funny. No, no, stop it. 
Stop it. Oh, Antonio, you here? No, I'm not here yet, man. All right, hey, Antonio. Antonio. What's going on? I'm looking at my screen. So I, you know, the guy, the guy's a decent dude, man. And his artwork was that that of all the work though he's done. I think he did a oh man, he did a cover or he they did an article about him, I think, in drawn is it draw? It was draw remember draw magazine that was draw and right now from tomorrow publishing. It was, it was like little art and writing magazines. Uh, actually, I should send you my copies of Write. You might like them, Nasser. Um, cool. But uh, anyway, he's just a good artist. That's all. And he's he. But this particular cover was not such a big deal. It was. It really wasn't a big deal. But man, did it get critiqued by this one person that turned into a, a like a landslide, a mudslide of garbage. And uh, what do you know about that, Antonio? Not anything. You know, I don't know nothing about art stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Here, I'm going to share. I'm going to find the artwork so I can share. And the, the, co the commentary was this. So this is basically where it boils down to. The, the commentary was that uh, Dan was working on this piece of artwork. Um, and uh, I don't even know how to begin to look for the art. Um, what, co what cover? Do you know what issue it was? Uh, last female Furies, I think, issue two. Yeah, it is. It's Female Furies, too. So... The concept here, I'm going to talk, it's going to open up a little conversation a bit about um, about art and design. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to find the cover that has all the markings on it because it's hilarious. So the crit here, maybe let me talk a little bit more about it before I'm going to pick, I'm going to find the cover here. Uh, this will do. Uh, is that a good cover? I'm having a hard time finding the specific one because I want to make sure it's... Um, I want to draw on top of it. Okay, I, you know what? I'll, I'll pick the smaller one. It doesn't matter. Ah, <laughs> uh, boomer moments. No, no, it's it's just that there's so many. There's only I I, I didn't find as many large ones as I ho was hoping for, and they were the large ones were all cut off. So anyway, can everybody see this so far? Uh, yeah, but it's tiny. I know, I know, I know. That's that's what I was afraid of. That's what she said. Hey yo. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much. A little, too, a little too much. A little too much. Never too much. Mm. What? Creamy Creek says, I don't know nothing about no birthing, Mr. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on over here? Hey, what happened? Uh, now I am having a boomer moment. Okay, here we go. So this is the cover in question. So you guys can't really see much of it. I'm going to enlarge it. Hopefully it maintains some some detail uh, okay i'll just shrink that up a little bit all so right blurry. you can see oh, it now though now it focused it's decent it's decent it's not the best but it's decent all right so this is what the the criticism was i'm going to draw in a separate layer so what this individual who claimed to be an art critic which is neither here nor there they could be an art critic you don't have to be an artist and or or even a great artist to be an art critic yes you do <laughs> no you don't but but you do have but you do have to understand basic principles of art to be an art critic and that's 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 more legitimate after all that's what's necessary to critique art so you can you know everyone's opinion is their own um, but there are certain things for example a square is a square right and a circle is a circle those are those are non negotiables we don't need to discuss that any further so the what you have here is an interesting gra art, man. This is really cool. So obviously, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to leave it to the chat. There's at least a 20 second delay. This this is the focal point right here of this art. Do we agree, gentlemen? Uh, I yeah. like it. I, I, I love Dan. I've been following him for a couple of years. Okay, so I'm going to show you why that is, and I'm going to show you why your eye is naturally drawn to that section of the artwork. This is primarily the situation. So we've got literally we got a head, a head, we got a head. These two things here are literally creating an arrow. Even with my little line here, and you follow this light, it's literally an arrow pointing to that character. Not only that, not only that, just just for the sake of discussion, this hand, this finger right here is literally pointing <laughs> at her, right? So <laughs> Even if you didn't quite get this here, can you see that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a different brush. Yeah. Oh gee, oh, for crying out loud! 
Oh, for crying out loud. So even if you you don't see that, and, and maybe this fist, it would have been cool if the finger was pointing here too, but that seems a little extra. That's not necessary. Even that's pointing there. So even if you miss these two, you got literally a finger pointing all the way to the moon. Right? This is this is the this is the truth. And everything is focusing on that. What this critic tried to say was that the this was wrong. And that Dan's approach to this, I mean, this is such a basic this is not even that important, guys. This is such a all right cover. It's not, it's all right. It's not his best work. I like his style a lot, but it's it's not crazy. And I don't think that he was killed, he killed himself doing it either, by the way. Um, so this is what the person is trying to say that everything's pointing to, to this crotch. What? That's what the person is trying to say. There's a line right here. There's a tangent line is going to a crotch, and that all this stuff here is going here. That this is the focal point. This just doesn't make much sense. No, it does not. I mean, you could literally see. So if I even if I put in here, type female furies. Even that, even the fact that there's an empty space, there's still literally a slot hanging out, out there in the wind just to point at the character. So, but the to to say that this was the focal point, maybe I think she's even trying to say that her, their eye their their eyesight or the line of sight was pointing here. I mean, holy crowly. Now, maybe, maybe with this person, I'm gonna give her because it was a female. I think she identified herself as a female. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this finger. <laughs> I think it just happens to fit inside the corner. Oh yeah, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that is. That's all that is. Okay. All right. I'm I'm doing a I'm doing a lot of work here just for for very minimal concern because this is not the problem that happened. What happened was, I mean, this is obviously what's stupid about the criticism. It's a stupid critique. And yes, just because you say it and just because it's your opinion doesn't mean it's valid. I know we say that to ourselves because we want ourselves to feel better. We say things like everyone's opinion is valid. And to an extent, that's true, except when it's wrong. Because if you're making if you're making an imperative statement or a statement that says this is this is what this is, that's no longer an opinion. You're making an imperative statement. If I said to you, I think this is what it is, or I feel this is what it is, that's an opinion. But this, this is what you were trying to get me to look at. And then, and then Dan, who, by the way, being, I don't know, I'd say he's about as normal as any normal guy out there. He's, he, he responded to this creek. Now, so, so everyone's giving, now, I didn't know this was a thing. I don't know, but I don't know anyone that hasn't done this before. Have you guys ever looked online for your, for, for your own name? Yes. Once, once or twice. Yes. Once or twice. Have you done it on Twitter? Yeah. I have. Well, no, I haven't yet, actually. I, but I'm going to now because I'm curious. But but ten, but but uh, Panosian apparently did it, and he was criticized for being a uh, what did they say? He was a uh, name stalking himself or something like that. I think everybody I know has searched themselves, yeah, at least once. Sure, and maybe maybe in Dan's defense, maybe he's just concerned because he cares about his work. Maybe he's not as dismissive about his own work as I am. Maybe he thought this was his best work, and he was really hoping he'd get a, a positive feedback on this graphic, on this art. I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Being an artist comes with a, a heavy dose of uh, a heavy dose of of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ego, right? Anyone that's a creative person, whether you're a writer, an, a, a a draftsman in art, if you're a dancer, a singer. You care. You wouldn't share it with everybody. I wouldn't. Ha I wouldn't be trying to grow my platform here on YouTube because I was an introvert. I care about what people think. Should we care what people think? That's up for debate. But that um, we care, huh? Well, well, if, should we care what people think? Uh, I, I say yes, but I also say it depends. 
Well, no, no, I, I and again, that's why I say it's up for debate. There's there's different levels of that. I'm I'm saying if I care what people think about my product, if I make a if I'm if I'm a uh, a chef and I make a, a nice, you know, let's say uh, uh, a nice dessert, you know, uh, st with strawberries and and whipped cream and oh yeah, oh yeah. Anyway, if I make that and I sell that in my restaurant and I and I care about the success of that product on my menu, I might I might as the proprietor or as the the as the the chef or the baker or whatever the cook come up and say, hey, how how are you? How was your meal? That's not an that's not an a, an unreasonable question, right? But for some reason, you don't always get that kind of feedback in comic book world. So, and because we have the immediate response of social media, Dan found this remark about his work. So, and normally when people do stuff, post a a remark, they kind of hope that somebody will pay attention. Am I incorrect in assuming that? Do you want people to pay attention to your remark on Twitter, Nasser? Mm, yeah. Well, of course you do. That's why you say it. That's why you attack them on their stuff. <laughs> I don't attack anybody. I, 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 I try you, to stay out of it. That's why you hunted them down when they were doing their live show. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I didn't, I didn't hunt them down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy about this artwork? I keep seeing it. Look at all the look at all the arrows. Look at all these arrows. Look at look at all these angles pointing. Even the radiating lines point. <laughs> it's incredible, man. Anyway, I mean, I, I I really shouldn't have to defend this artwork. It is what it is, guys. Monger Mafia. Thank you, Hikaru. How are you? Heck, sup, peoples? I'm gonna read some more of the chat in a minute. But the point I'm making to you guys is that this is an unreasonable critique. Obviously, it was loaded with a particular opinion, a particular um, a political view, and they wanted and, and they wanted to express it, and they said it, and then they got the attention of the creator that created it, and then and then he gets blasted for paying attention. So then now they get blasted for paying attention. He commenced to start discussing it with the individual and they start to have this conversation about it. And I thought Dan's, Dan's commentary, you go back and watch Zach's video who did a great job of showing the whole, most of the exchange. I, I'm sure there's been more exchange since. I thought Dan was a super, super chill about it. And I guess what happened was um, more of this commentary seeped over onto Dan's page and people started to defend Dan or did they go over to, I don't that's the part I'm, I'm not sure of. Um, but somehow the news spread that this person critiqued the, the work and uh, 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 I, I'm not sure what's going on there from that quick comment. All right, cool. And uh, so then Frank Thierry jumps in. And Frank Thierry is a writer. Uh, according to Ethan, he's a New York guy, which is I can certainly relate to. because yeah, This is the stuff I missed. I didn't hear any of the Frank Thierry stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the part that's super exciting. <laughs> he, he actually used to follow me back on Twitter. And then one day he just randomly unfollowed me. And I, I wonder if it was the comic skate stuff or what. Yeah, well. Possibly, but that's what's fascinating about this. And this goes back to some of the stuff we've been talking about lately, how people that are part that that align themselves against comics gay or for SJW stuff, they tend to they they're so they're so busy trying to like wave the flag and point and 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 uh, uh shout down anything that's in conflict, they don't they don't have any loyalty to each other. And that was interesting that the word that kept coming up in all the defense of Frank Thierry, well, here's what happened. Frank Thierry ends up going on. Frank Thierry ends up commenting on Dan Panosian's art, defending his friend. He used some very interesting language. Told the guy to F off. <laughs> right? To which the guy responded. Apparently, the guy, uh, the guy that responded to Frank Thierry was some gentleman from, uh, I don't even know if I should use the term gentleman. But anyway, it was a dude from Germany. He critiques, he criticizes him for saying stuff. Frank gets so upset. He's like, look, man, if you want to talk that mess, basically, when it, it could be at a con, you find me anywhere, we'll handle this like men, basically. Mm, he about that life. Oh, I tell you what, though, he has, he says some really funny stuff. He called him a keyboard Jungati. <laughs> 
That was perfect. That was a crazy. I, I don't know if anybody knows who John Gotti is out in the audience. Never heard of him. What? No, no, no. Well, John Gotti. I, let me tell you about John Gotti. My buddy. When I was growing up, I had a good friend who moved from the Bronx to Queens. And he ended up moving into the building that John Gotti either owned or lived in, or both. And uh, he was like he was like the neighborhood hero. Everybody loved John Gotti because he was always doing stuff for people. But that guy was an interesting cat. He was a, he was definitely involved with the mob, and he went to prison for it. But so so this idea of calling someone a, a keyboard John Gotti made me just. It just cra cracked me up because I started thinking about how these guys are all act tough behind Twitter, but they don't actually have any any real substance to to anything. They all talk smack. I'm not talking about. I wish if they would just focus on ideas and if if they would just focus on on uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here. Um, ways to validate their their opinions blah 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 i'm trying to be fancy with that but i'm just saying if they if they would just talk like normal people at least we could have a discussion but they don't they just they parrot each other right that's where the npc thing comes from they parrot each other they say the same thing they, that other one says they just repeat what everybody says so that they all sound like that exactly the same and then what ends up happening is they are all they're they're all like emboldening each other in their own like locker room but when they come out to the field, they all they buckle. And 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 that and the examples of some of that is like I've never I don't think I've ever had a uh, an encounter, a negative encounter with anyone outside of Twitter. I've had a little bit on on Instagram. Um a little bit less and, and less so on Twitter. And anything outside, never. I heard I, that's not true. When I went to this last show, I will say that I heard I heard jerk monger. Jerk monger. I got a couple of dirty looks. That's probably the extent of that. That isn't that crazy though. Yeah. Knuckleheads. So anyway, Frank Thierry though gets blasted, right? He gets he gets into this tug of war with these guys. He starts fighting them, you know, verbally, of course. And uh, everybody starts to dogpile him. He deletes all his tweets. And this is the controversial thing to me. This is the real controversial thing to me. He deletes all his tweets. And then he apologizes uh, in a statement. I forget who he made it to. I think it was. Um... Well, I read the I read the apology and I was like, I wouldn't have did nothing, period. Was, was it a uh, was it was it on, on bleeding cool? Well, well, there's a clip. Someone had a, a screenshot of it on Twitter. I saw earlier. Oh, so I was okay. Thinking. So he apologized, and, and and maybe maybe he thought he was doing the right thing. I, you know, uh, Ethan suggested that it was because he was concerned for his job, and that's probably true. Well, yeah, he says uh, DC has that social media policy, but it sounded like when Ethan was there that they picked and choose when they would. <laughs> yeah. Does he do anything for DC these days? I know he's doing the Jughead book. I I think he's drawing for, for uh, I mean, rather writing for se several people. I think he's done some stuff for Marvel as well. Oh, okay. Jughead was the only gig I knew he had right now. Oh, okay. Okay. You well, so, oh, <laughs> so anyway, what do you guys think? We have a general discussion about these things. We have a, a basic theme that we say we don't apologize. Why? Why was this, in this particular case? Why was this a bad move for him? You think he cucked out? <laughs> oh, come on! You're, no, um, you better give me a better quantification. This is important. Hmm. People want to know, like, why, why, what's wrong with? Because normal people, are like, hey, I don't want to have no problem. I don't want no trouble. I don't want. I'm not trying to have no trouble with nobody. Leave me. Well, leave me alone. Leave me alone. No, I, I think I would have to read uh, Frank's uh, tweets and the guy he was talking to. I think I'd have to read them to better judge it. And that kills me. Is all these dudes are like, oh yeah, you know, it's real, real grown up of you. One, one young woman said came out. <laughs> Try to tell. I'll meet you out in the in the parking lot. I'm like, come on. I think you're missing the point here. He's not gonna fight you. That's 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 why he's challenging these people now. Mm. Yeah, man. I, I I think I I I agree. I, I don't. 
with Ethan, I don't think you should. I don't. I don't think you should apologize to people in situations like this because I don't think he did anything wrong. I think he defended himself. I don't think he did anything wrong. That's not normal on, on um, on social media. Um, I think it's disingenuous for people to kind of come in and say, "Oh, you know, oh look at you being all tough," when there's literally people calling to get people fired from their jobs or or swatting people. I think that's a bunch of BS. I think that's uncool. But uh, but you know he he cares about his job though, right? Akuma says he apologized to save his job. I mean that's that's probably true. But I think it's unfortunate that that it got that far. I mean I I wouldn't have responded so hot and heavy in the first place myself, but that's me, right? Mm. I got a super chat here from Arthur Brown, my man. Active super chats, every bit helps. JM creates content. That's true. That's true. It helps me create content. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Um, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have made any comments like that in the first place, just because that's just because I'm kind of a I'm a bit of a pacifist anymore. Gosh, isn't that weird? I would never have considered myself a pacifist. I like boxing. I love MMA. Does that make me a pacifist? Because I just don't want to fight people right off the top. Hmm. Yeah, you can call me. I'm giving you guys permission to call me, to, to to call me out. Go ahead, call me soy. Go ahead, tell me why I'm soy. Well, you know me. I, I I just say what what it is, man. You know how I do. Yeah. <laughs> like. I'm I'm really waiting for Nasser to say it. Hmm. Okay, because I'm like you know I don't sugarcoat nothing. <laughs> no, I didn't sound soy. You know what it is for me is that I'm always I think I think it's because I come from New York City. I've always been like okay, let me. I'm always assessing my situation first. That's never been my first course because there's been so many times I've gotten into a, into a tussle with people and you all of a sudden they pull out a knife or they pull out or they happen to have a pistol and you're like, oh, sorry. No, what I meant was that your mom is very friendly and here, have a drink. <laughs> you know, we never really got into that kind of stuff. But uh, I, don't know. I don't know. In that particular case, I just think it's it's offensive to me in the first place that people would be try to be brutal to you uh, while you're commenting and defending your, your buddy. And I think to, to a point, I think he's got a lot to, to a lot of um, bit, 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 bit too fo says, be too fo says, trip mong non-aggression is not exactly pacifist. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It makes me feel better. I'll put down my tofu now. I don't want to, I want you guys to call me soy because I don't drink soy milk. I drink I drink almond milk. Almond milk. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, would you defend how far would you go to defend uh a situation in a situation like that? You think would you have I think Nasser would go out there swinging? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. It's it's tough. Like I said, I don't know uh Frank's whole situation with that. Like, I don't know. I do, I don't know the whole story, so I can't really say. Oh, you should check it out. I think you do have a lot of opinions about it. Well, listen, at least watch uh, Ethan's last live live show. It was good. It was really good. I mean, I mean, everything he's saying. Oh, he also posted. He also showed some artwork of uh, Heather Swain. Yeah, that oh, page. Yeah, Whew. Whole page it looks, red. It looks fantastic. It looks great. You know, totally I totally that page. Yeah, I was impressed with that. That looked. I was not going to give it to me, but. <laughs> you, well, you get first dibs on it. You I would dibs. definitely like that particular page. That, yeah, that that's page nice. would be fantastic. I think that would be nice hanging in my bedroom. Yeah, his he draws women beautifully. He draws women beautifully. Yeah, he draws everything beautifully. I was like, uh, well, I, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying that that particular piece of art is like, oof. I'm just saying, I haven't seen much. Uh, I was like, oh, Ethan took a day off there. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Uh, uh, hey, guys, I, I actually got to go, but uh, everybody in the chat, if we get to 15 grand, we get an Elliot Fernandez trading card on the Trixie Kane Blood Reaper Indiegogo. Hey -oh. That's what I'm so, so I'm putting the link to that in the chat here. So if you want to support me and Elliot uh, at 15 grand, we get his trading card. How far away are we? Uh, 5,500 bucks. All right. You guys know what to do. All 80 of you. <laughs> Go get it. Get you some. Get you some. All right. Everybody.
See you guys. Oh, cool, right on, man. Thanks for hanging out, man. So yeah, man, I just uh, it was really interesting. I, 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 it's interesting to see these things play out online from my perspective in particular because, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm generally not that interested in in getting that aggressive about stuff. But man, I, I totally understand why people would be that that way about that. And uh, I think that a lot of I think a lot of people have the opinion that what's happening online is generally, um. It's, 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 well, I, I think the term we don't use anymore is passive aggressive. Oh, shit. I would have lit her ass up right when it, it first happened, man. Huh? When it, yeah. When it first popped off, man, because I, I was, I, I was like, he got the patience of a saint. He kept, he kept trying to have respectful dialogue and just kept, she kept coming back with that nonsense. I was like, I was like, you trying to reason with an insane person. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, it was clear she was looking for for fight, and that's that's why I started realizing. You know, I talked to uh, you know Richard C. Meyer a few times, and he's he's told me he's like, hey man, he's like, he's I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told Ethan, get off Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, Ugh. he's like, Twitter is toxic, get off Twitter. So it is. well, it's it's it sucks because you know you might have just a, a basic opinion about anything, and someone will kind of. I mean, I've I've been aggressive online where I've been upset. I've been passive aggressive too, where I try to, I try I try to be civil, but <laughs> I'll say stuff that I know is going to be somewhat infuriating. Mm. And uh, so I could be ugly. I could be ugly. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a saint, but um, far from it actually. But that said, I you know I typically, I. I I try to live in such a way that I can keep my own my own anxiety level down. I don't like my my stress level to stay that high. So I'm always trying to be like, all right, all right, relax. Let's talk about this. But I'm telling you, more and more, the more I see what's going on, the more I see how, the more I see how, um, it's not that are they're you, not human. Are you drawing the man of steel? It looks like you're drawing the man of steel. Uh, it, it it is sort of, but it's not. I'm, this is for a particular little project. I'm. I'm oh, okay, because I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm gonna put someone into this pose. So I'm just oh. trying to. I'm. They asked me to do some of these early drawings of it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just feel like I. I think that what's really happening there is that people. It's not that people aren't human necessarily. I mean, they, everyone has dignity, um, but they're not behaving. Like they're, we're all part of the same human race anymore. There, people are literally creating an opportunity to really just be, be hateful, and then don't want to talk. They don't. They're not interested in dialogue. That's what I should say. They're not interested in human be- interaction. I mean, I feel like I feel I feel really frustrated about it because I'm always teaching my kids about how to talk to each other. My my daughter and my son are always at each other's throats, mm. and uh, I'm always trying to talk to them about how that's not the way we're supposed to do things. We need to learn how to talk and be civil with each other because we're living with each other. We're family. Obviously, these people don't think they're family. And uh, yeah, Doug says they're under a spell. I, I I think that's true. I think to some degree, I, I just, but it's just whether that's a spell or not, I think this is where um, what Ethan is always frustrated about in, the, in that commentary is that regardless of that, they're under a spell and they're yell- they're, they're, they're charging at you with, with, uh, with, uh, with a butcher knife, I, I still got to stop them, right? That's really the that's really the point that everyone's trying to make here is like we how do we how do we do that if people aren't willing to have a, a real uh, a, a genuine conversation? Um, so I, I think that that's frustrating to me because you know I, I I sound ridiculous when I'm saying no let's 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 try to work this out and then they're like no no it's almost like you're trying to you're trying to talk to someone who's drunk. That's what it feels like. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're trying to, hey man, dude, man, let me have your keys. No, I can drive. I'm just fine. No, let me have your keys. No, I can drive. I'm just fine. And no, let me have your keys. No, I can drive. And then you have to like, okay, look, I'll hold you. I'm gonna have to hold you now because you're clearly not thinking right. Mm. And that's what I that's what I feel like is going on. They're not that person was not gen, was not being genuine with their critique. And then wasn't gen, and then they started to say things like, oh, that's that was what cracked me up when they were like. <clears throat> oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> you just, I see, because it sounds like some of the stuff I've heard on the other side. 
I see because sorry that I, I, my opinion doesn't count because I just have an observation like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You weren't just making an observation. You were trying to try, you were trying to um, shame this guy out of doing something that's just gen like I said, it wasn't even that great of a cover. <laughs> you know? Remember that Milo Manara cover with Suit Fighter Woman that caused all that trouble? You talking about they caused the Frank Cho thing or yeah, 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 yes. Like, come on, man. That's see, and and this is another thing I, I, I have a problem. Maybe I'm thinking the wrong way about this too. But I feel like there's just as much as much sexualization. If the conversation is really about sexualization, there's still just as much sexualization over the, the male form as there is over the female form. Mm. The, do you would you agree with that? Yeah, but see. Okay, in the well, comic book stuff, it's mostly guys anyway. Sure. And then so, and a lot of straight guys. So, yeah, they drawing hot chicks in sexy positions. It catches your eye. It's visual. It is a visual medium. I understand that. But wouldn't you agree, though, that the male form is, is the, the men are just as nude as the women could be possibly? Well, I like to think when we draw ma men, We'd like to draw them, you know, in peak physical condition, uh, uh -huh. in 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 great physical poses. Um, oh shit, John Malin. Hey, John, what's going John. on? John, bring your ass in here, John. Oh, I'm gonna send him the link. I didn't put it in for everybody. Oh, okay, I was like, yeah, John, we love you, man. Come on, man, come come hang with us. Uh, I'm not gonna. I, I I'm only gonna be on for another 15, 20 minutes, but. Wolf hell. Can I add John to this? This you chat? Should, you should be able to. Oh, it doesn't matter because then I have to I'd have to bring in hold on. But yeah, I, I just I just feel like the the there's just as much quote unquote. And I'm gonna I'm putting it in quotes because I agree with you. I think it's just the idealized human form. And it just happens that men find the idealized female form sexual and exciting. But that doesn't mean that there isn't the same thing going on. Just because guys don't see women the same way doesn't mean doesn't mean that, or rather, guys don't see guys the same. Doesn't mean, or, or if women doesn't don't see guys the same way, doesn't mean that the the image isn't isn't out there. And that's really the point. I'm I'm I'm, I'm that's really the 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 comment I'm I'm saying there is that it's it's happening all around. It's just they're picking and choosing where their aggression aggression is. Or passive aggression is is focused on, and I think that that's crazy. I think if you really were being honest, again, but this requires honest, honest conversation about it. That's the problem, and we're not being honest. We're just they're they're being they're being jerks. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm the jerk monger, but that's how I know because game recognizes game, and I know what's going on with the jerks. Game recognize game. That's an old saying. That's an old saying. Oh, I think Master knows that saying. I you know. Gang, gang. You think he'll know that one? I don't think he will. But anyway, that's 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 where I that's where I, I'm I'm living on that subject. I, I I think it's so stupid and it's so um it's it's stupid. It's not just stupid. It's disgusting. It's it's a it's a poor way for us to talk. It's not. It's not. And it, and it's harmful to that particular guy. Dan Panosian is is of all the people you could possibly discuss in this in the in the in the set in the conversation about all the stuff that's happening politically on comics and all that stuff. That guy is probably not even that concerned about most of this stuff. But he he's involved now because he must right. And now they're dragging him him in. And uh, he didn't even. <laughs> I, I just wonder. I haven't heard from Dave Johnson. I, I wonder if he's commented at all. I don't know that he will. But again, I thought the whole situation was just stupid, and and it just shows that they eat their own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just feed <clears throat> on each other. Yeah, yeah, women and men are uh, both sexualized in comics, hundred percent. Do you um, agree with that? Or are you making fun of me? No, I agree with that. I mean, one bat wing, <laughs> two. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen crotch shots and butt shots of Spider Man. Yeah. So oh, yeah. when we, when, you know, what are straight people look at that, you know, they're like, eh, that's a cool pose. Um, but when a, or a straight female, 
or a gay dude looks at that, they're probably like, ooh, look at that bulge. Right. You know, look at that butt. Yeah. Look at that peak physical perfection. Um, yeah. I mean, look, people are human, man. Um, you know, girls have appetites, too, towards uh, men, um, just like dudes have appetites towards women. That's right. And comics being a, a predominantly male hobby, specifically superhero, mainstream superhero comics. Um, yeah, it's it's only natural that we would have, you know, beautiful women in there. Um, you know, whenever we get a chance to draw. Them. Right, right. Yeah. And I think it's it's just because of the way we perceive that form. I mean, uh, I was it's funny you say that. I was looking at a at a sign. It was a billboard, and my eyes aren't that great. I can't see far away very well. Mm -hmm. So I definitely need glasses. I have a pair of prescription sunglasses I wear, but at night I'm 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 in trouble. So I'm watching this this billboard. I'm like, oh, it's interesting. I think it's a woman, but it wasn't. It was actually a couple of people formed together. But what it was is it was using these curves that are very feminine in the in the composition. And so I, what mm -hmm. I was registering was the fe you know a typical typical design elements that make up a, a female form being curves versus like a hard angles and 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 V shapes usually are considered masculine. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, it could also be water represents femininity a lot of times because of the for the same reasons. And here I'm looking at I'm, and I'm and that's not because, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure that the person even thought about that when they were designing the billboard. Maybe they did. I don't, I don't even remember what the billboard was for. But, uh, mm -hmm. but the point I'm making though is that that's just the way that the that males uh, perceive those shapes and those forms. So, at the end of the day, is it sexual? Like this figure right here, I'm drawing this this uh, this bodybuilder buff superhero guy. To me, it's just a it's a symbol of strength and power. But to someone who's maybe attracted to the male form, they might see that as sexual, even though mm -hmm. I'm just drawing something that's powerful and strong, something that represents her heroism in that case. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just repeating what we've already said. I, it's just a um, it's just a dis it's just a disservice to the creator, the artist in that case, because you know, I'm, here's that image again, you know. It's so clear that nothing, <laughs> I mean, you have to really stretch it to claim this, but this is so obvious to me. So maybe the per the problem is not in the artist, but in the person that's seeing it. And I think that's Wait, the real I, I don't, I don't understand. What is this? Um, the V's and the points and. I'm I'm reenacting here what I saw in the discussion back and forth between Dan Panosian and that critique the the critic that reviewed his artwork as something that was so are you aware of what's going on with all that maybe you don't know what's going on no I, I I've heard a little bit about it but I don't know any of the details some uh, something I I had caught the tail end of something Ethan was doing in a stream yes yeah, about Panosian and someone else and he gave her like a backhand criticism. Yeah, well, he he. After a bunch of after he tried to be super gracious to her, and you know, yeah, a couple of times. Commentary. Yeah, he finally came back and said, "Look, why don't you go back and learn how to draw?" Basically, that's what he was trying to say. He said it's super <laughs> nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then she came back and said, "Oh, now you're going to criticize my artwork, but I'm clearly just a hobbyist." Well, that's not what you started out as. And she came back and tried to tell him that his what he was he she tried to tell him. This is her. This is her. Now, this wasn't her trying to. This is what her argument is. This is what everyone else's argument is. That even though she mentions him and talks about his artwork, he he apparently wanted to see what they call that vanity. Was that vanity stalking? Is that what they call that? He was looking for his name on on online, which is not an uncommon thing. I've done that a million times myself. Um, maybe not as much on on Twitter because I don't understand how to find anything on Twitter. <laughs> but um, but su supposedly he discovered this criticism of the work. He comments on it and saying, that's not really what he, he she says. This was clearly just a, a strap thing to point to her crotch or whatever. To what is it her name? Whiplash or something like that. Oh, P Panosian drew this. Yeah, this is his cover. Oh, God, so sucks. <laughs> what she, <laughs> so what I said was this is what she was trying to say, that everything was pointing here. Dan says, no. Clearly, what I was trying to do was this. 
everything was pointing. He he actually drew a little quick thing and said, no, this is where everything's pointing down to her. If I was looking at this as a design, my conversation was there's literally everything's going to her armpit. Yeah. Yeah. There's literally a a V shape pointing down. Even the negative space is pointing to this right here. Mm -hmm. So it's ridiculous to say that, in my opinion, and I think it's mm -hmm. a it's a, a valid opinion because I happen to be after 20 plus years in art and design business, I happen to be an expert. I know mm -hmm. we don't like to talk about ourselves that way, but that's the reality. This mm -hmm. person is thinks she's an expert because because reasons. So, <laughs> oh, shit. oh yeah, and, I, and the lady and the lady was saying that the straps on the girl were pointing towards her crotch. Yeah, that's all strap. Yeah. 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 Uh, and 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 there's uh, literally a finger pointing to this girl but her mm -hmm. her the, the woman was saying that it was pointing further this way and this fist was pointing here and that's pointing there and they're all laughing at the <laughs> i'm like wow. man you gotta really you gotta really bend the eye line, the, the the line of sight for all that stuff where clearly yeah. she is the this woman here is the focal point i mean even the even the colors are pointing to her you have all this cool colors in the foreground, warm colors in the background, that blast of white in the background is just highlighting her right there. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I feel like yeah, I, I, I think I think the attempt is going that way. I think it's poorly executed. Um, I, I would have moved things around a little bit for a better composition. Um, sure. And that's the why idea, the, the, the idea. Yeah. The idea is there, though. Yeah. That's why I drew the, the, the you know, a faux, mm -hmm. you know, uh, type or, or logo on the top, the word word mark, just to kind of you know. You, but even still, you you still can't you still can't ignore that this is what's going on there. That's clearly just that. Now, I feel stupid talking about that because that's just such an obvious, an obvious, uh, uh, obvious argument, I guess. So what really happened though was the the big the rest of the controversy came came from Frank Thierry went on went on to defend. Dan, and then it became like a bigger thing. And he he defended Dan with with language that was a little more aggressive. Um, some some argued that it was fi uh, threatening physical violence, which basically to the he girl? Was like, no man, not even to the girl. So it, it was another guy who commented on on the girls defending the girls' critique of it. Mm. it. Happened to be some dude from Germany who apparently has had some tussle with him in the past. So he tells him, "Look, man." If you got beef with my buddy, you got you can bring it up with me. And if you want, we can take it. <laughs> Basically, we could take it outside at a con <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> you know, it didn't sound like anything that I haven't heard, you know, from my buddies talking. You know, it was just smack talk. Man, did yeah. that go on that was that unpopular? So now, now everyone's was mad at Frank Thierry. And Frank now became, but here's the thing, it stopped being about the artwork at all. It became about Frank Thierry's com commentary. And then he mm -hmm. gets blasted. He ends up deleting all his tweets and then uh, apologizes for it. I think I'm bleeding cool. Uh, yeah, I saw the statement. <laughs> that's yeah. news. I mean, yeah. all that is, it's, that's all, that's some really ridiculous stuff. Uh, Dan Panosia needs uh, one toughen the crap up for, God, I hate these fucking types, man. Dan Panosia is such a fucking weirdo. And, uh, the art wasn't that great. No, it the, wasn't the, great. the idea is there. The execution was poor. And uh, yeah, man, if, if I had that picture right now, I'd, I'd run it through. I would just start cutting things out and showing you guys um, why I think it's so poorly executed. It looks ridiculous. Well, and um, not to mention Big Bart is in a, if I recall, she's in more of a perspective. You're almost looking at her as a bit of a down shot. And then the two other figures in the middle. Yeah, there. The two other figures in the middle, you're looking at dead on. The girl in the black is almost in a leaning like you're looking at an upshot going on. And then yeah, the, the, uh, the granny goodness is just kind of flat on. I mean, there's like two different, maybe, yeah, two different perspectives going on here. Uh, not to mention, uh, if this is a down shot, which I believe the attempt is, then that's the only way that these hands work. Otherwise, they're coming from midgets. <laughs> so... 
So, so it's got to be a down shot, but the front two figures make it look like it's a straight on or the the front or the other three figures make it look like it's straight on and the black figure makes it look like it's possibly an upshot. So straight on. Yeah. So you're saying that she's just for the sake of the audience here. So she's kind of in this kind of. Yes. Mode. Right. Mm hmm. I should erase that. She's more like this. So she's almost. in this pose and Barda is kind of she's clearly in a down shot yeah mm -hmm. and she granny goodness might be just be straight on straight actually. on yeah mm -hmm. so so yeah i agree i agree that we have a, a perspective issue here yeah Pin pinosian sucks guys i don't <laughs> i don't know why this is brand brand spanking news um i like the yeah yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's fine. He's a dope. And uh, <laughs> yeah. this, uh, yeah, this drawing's not very well executed. And uh, you know, look, dude, if that's the worst that the girls said to him, and that got his goat, then you know, grow up, dude. Well, he didn't. He didn't. He just. He didn't even. That's the. That's the thing that Dan really handled himself super well. He just went on to say, "Well, no, this is not what I intended." Because her commentary was basically to say that he was. She being was why didn't you seek like, her out? To defend yourself. See, it, it's different, man. When you get tagged into something and somebody's trying to like pull you in, what was was she trying to pull him in? I not sure. So he, he's actually seeking out critics of his work. Well, I thought she uh, tagged him in and and said that she didn't like the way he drew that because of the crotch thing. I thought that's the way those tweets are still up or their own. Oh, if she or. tagged him in, then yeah, then whatever. I'll, I'll give him a little credit. I'll say, look, if you get tagged in, man, then yeah, all right, defend yourself. And she kept right. going. I mean, he was nice as hell, like four or five times. Kept trying to say, well, I'm, that wasn't what I intended. I'll try to do better next time. And then she goes back again. She was trying to get a reaction. And well, I was just like, oh, yeah, well, most people wanted. are. I mean, that's just yeah. it. Most people are. So that's why I was saying if he wasn't tagged into the conversation, then oh, Cecil says she didn't tag him. But somehow oh. they found they found each other. She she tweeted. She put his name in it or something because I was like, damn, you know, he found well, she's it. Allowed to say, she's a nobody. She's allowed to say whatever she wants and be right or wrong about it to go in there. Like Dan Panosian clearly doesn't have enough things going on. That he has to go out and just single out some rando person. I mean, is she like is, is she like the uh, the the your boy Zach? You know, popularity <laughs> level. <laughs> Who is she? No, I never even. Yeah, heard I mean, her. she's a rando nobody. Yeah, I saw her art and it was horrible, and I was like, okay. I think, <laughs> but I think this is one of those situations. You know what it is? I think that. I think to some degree, and I think uh, um, Ethan kind of made this pretty interesting commentary about it. Ethan calls him a, a, a normie, or he kind of refers to him as though he was kind of just a normal yeah, guy. Yeah, and, and Zach does too. Phenosian? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, he's, he's, he's a dick. <laughs> he's a normie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, here's, but here's what my point, though. What, whether whether you feel that way or not, I think what I think what's happening is that or was what has happened? See, so I sent you the link just in case you want to jump in. I'm sure I would love to hear your commentary. Um, I think what happened there is that it's these guys don't. I, I made this comment to somebody else. These guys don't uh, don't seem to be very agile in this in this uh, 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 social media world. They don't. They 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 still are. St they're still functioning like it's Wizard Magazine still being published. Mm, yeah. And and they so only, yeah, they, some people, some people, their mindset. Look, they've been born and bred into this system as it is now. They see themselves as being uh, the people that are in control of what people think about, you know, comic book criticism, and yeah. that's not true. Welcome to the internet. Yeah. So everyone's yeah. going to have an opinion. You cannot. You can. I, I say this all the time. People don't listen to me. <laughs> um, you cannot lift your hand up above the crowd without many, many people within the crowd trying to bring your hand back down. Th that's just the way it is. You cannot rise up above without people trying to drag you back because they didn't succeed. They don't want you to succeed. This is the way it's going to be. This is the way the whole world is going to function. So anytime you try to do something significant, somebody will always be there to drag you down. So you have to start picking and choosing who is 
the more important person for you to spend your time on. Um, just some rando nobody, whether their art is fantastic or sucks, doesn't matter. But if they're just a random nobody, then how much energy do you really want to put into that? Not, not, not enough that would cause whatever this new situation is, Dan. <laughs> uh, I got a super chat here. Uh, Schmeebs, thank you for the $5. Malin brought up that Sinkevich Sarah Huckabee Sanders drawing last week. Panosians tried to say it wasn't a target open to interpretation. Ironic. <laughs> he said it was a, he said it was like a, <clears throat> a record with numbers counting down on it. <laughs> it's like, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a fucking asshole guys. Look, I mean, he, he turns, he turns a blind eye when it's convenient to him, when he thinks he can put a barb into somebody. Um, and he can't even give a straight answer because I said I, I said straight up, dude. How how would you feel if you know someone had done this with a drawing of your wife, your daughter, your mother, and he 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 could not answer. He kept walking around. Oh, let, let me get back to you on that. He's not even a man. It's not even a man answer. You say, look, dude. Yeah, I'd be pretty pissed if somebody drew my wife, my mother, my sister's head in a fucking bullseye that said most punchable face. Mm -hmm. So that's the type of character you deal with a person like Dan Panosian. I didn't know that was him. I didn't know that was him. Yeah. That puts well, that in yeah. a different life for me. Uh, he, he's lacking of character. Mm. 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 Yeah. And, and, and now he's out here vanity <laughs> searching for criticisms of his garbage to your <laughs> artwork. <laughs> Dan, 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 you suck. You suck, Dan. You sucked back in 1993. 293 you were terrible on profit that uh steven platt was the only good thing about profit then you disappeared and you wormed your way into the armpit of the comic book industry and you do a cover like that Ugh. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> you Ooh. are you are the the fire of comics gate you are awesome john malin Oh, I hate these fake fucks, man. He's so fake. <laughs> <laughs> that was dynamite. That was dynamite. Oh, man. Well, Sorry for the language, language people. No, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. No, man, listen. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. I love your... John. John is the, is, is the man. He I'm is. Man. Man. He's, the, he's the Conan bar of the, the barbarian. He's the real barbarian. Oh, I keep oh. telling people they be laughing at me. I told I fuck with John, man. That's why I was like, I like, but I fuck with you too. You know that. Yeah, I, no, like yeah. I love John. I love John. Yeah, yeah, I love John, man. Um, no, man. Well, that's a great point. And I, I, I didn't realize he was the one. I, I've heard some of the, the the names thrown around. I didn't realize he was the one that made that. That that is not. I cool. mean, these are the same people though. When you tweet to them and go, okay, so y'all think that was cool that Robbie Rodriguez sent pictures of his anus to Ethan? Uh, mm, uh, mm. yep. He he would be that guy. He would yeah, be that I'm guy. Like, I was like, these people are so full of shit, man. It's what. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. So yeah, I, I I still maintain that that's a, a big chunk of this 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 foolishness is come is from that that the reason why he's looking online is because of the reason why I used to do it too back in the old days. You know when I first started Instagram three four five years ago six years ago, um, I want I was curious what people thought about me, and and uh, because we don't have those things anymore, and so it's easy for them to get to to start eating their own now because they're still operating from that perspective of like, Oh no, you know, it's all good. And you know, uh, um, look, nobody writes stories about Dan Panosian. That's why he has to find a rando critic. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Does anyone care what Dan Panosian's next big thing is? No. Can anyone even name what Dan Panosian's next or last big thing was? No. Who no. cares? Who cares? Let's wow. stop pretending like Dan Panosian is some freaking uh, magnificent corner store, the corner, cornerstone of the comic book industry. Mm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. He's a bad representative. And I might not be great, but I'm not going to pretend to um, be some kind of uh, figure of any moral standing and uh, go after people for cheap <laughs> little criticism. Now, now you, like, wait guys, you don't second. like the you don't oh. like the way I draw feet? More power to you. No, so. You wait one second, John Malin. I loved your cable run. It was fucking fantastic. Thank you. Well, thanks. 
Yeah. Look, I'm sure some people love the original prophet. They're wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah. you didn't like Stephen Platt on there? No, Platt's great, but no, but Platt it started awesome, with Panosian. Yeah, Panosian yeah, started the original Prophet series. Did but he I really? Think he, yeah, I think he did up to like issue. I don't know, maybe five or six, something like that. I don't know. I could have sworn it was Platt all along. No, no, yeah, no I no, thought it was no. Platt, but yeah, but no. I'm 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 gonna take uh take John's word on. Oh, John is a John's a sage. I'll take that. Yeah. Well, let's see. Hold I know. On. Uh, I know. Shelby said he inked uh, over Platt a few times or something when he was over at Extreme. So, yeah, it's like I gotta get. I gotta. I gotta get Shelby on. I, I would. I would love to talk to Shelby and pick his brain. Somebody, uh, Sean Tillman wrote uh, "Savage Malin Finish." I like that. Malin the Savage. What do you think, hmm. John? Yeah, sure. I think um, you. I'm about to share this picture. Let's what picture? Uh, hey, uh, Dan Pinocian. Oh, okay. I'm the, I'll lock it on you then. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just do okay, your thing okay. for a second. Let me. I'm trying to find one of the original covers. Why is this so hard? That's what she said. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting pictures for what I guess is probably Dan Pinocian art, but it's everything but profit. Yeah. <laughs> Am I spelling the name right? P A N O S I A. P A P A be a Panosian. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. All right. I'll just type in profit number one. I still like I still like the way Dan draws caricatures, but I don't I don't disqualify what you said at all, my friend. That was perfectly perfectly put. <laughs> I love it. You're cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> okay. So good shit about Platt. <laughs> what? Platt Platt was the bomb in Phantom oh, Show. Awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. Hey, who is 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 this who I think it is? Is is Donnie Thumbafist? Is that who's that? Donnie what? Thumbin Fist. I don't know what that means. Huh. Um, Here's Dan Panosian. Uh, it's number four. Ah. Uh. Yeah. See, when people talk about like bad '90s, when uh, you know, when people are bringing down Rob, what people are actually thinking about is Dan Panosian. <laughs> <laughs> Dan was one of the worst uh, Rob wannabes, and. Uh, you, you can you can see it all up in here. He claims he was a Jim Lee guy, but no, he was totally a Rob guy, and uh, Rob knew it. That's why Rob gave him a job, and Jim Lee didn't. I so, mean, a lot um, of those guys hired people that could draw like them, though, right? Or yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm saying that Dan is an example of when people talk about bad Rob Liefeld art. This is it. This is what they're <laughs> thinking of. Wait, so, so, they're, not, they're not talking about bad Rob Liefeld. Rob Liefeld art. No, no. Look, <laughs> these guys couldn't hold the candle. Dan Panosian could not hold the candle to Rob Liefeld uh, back in 1990, whatever this is, 293. No way. Uh, Rob would have rendered the hell out of this thing, for one, uh, in a good way, not just a lot of rando crosshatching. God, Panosian's so terrible. <laughs> and uh, I, I knew this back when I was getting it. And thank God for Stephen Platt. So... Yeah, Platt was a godsend to profit. But Dan Panosian was just super bore, bad execution. Um, you know, lucky that Rob was generous to let him on this title. So well. So wasn't he an inker back then though? Yeah, he did some inks. Yeah. But he, he was okay. Yeah, so did Art to Bear. He did inks too, but he also did black and white. Right, 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 right. With Rob as well. No, I just wasn't sure because I don't remember. Hear, hear me now, believe me later, Elliot. No, I hear I, me I, now, believe me later. Do you need me to go dig up my original profit comics to show no, you? I'm I just don't have I'm I'm over here checking my text real quick, but uh I I remember Platt. I don't remember Panosian at all. Yeah, believe me now. Uh hear me now, believe me later. Yeah, it, well remember your own words. <laughs> Trust me. Look, I'll, I'll put money on it. 
Yeah. No, Plaid, no. Didn't come in, Plaid didn't come in until like later on. It was no, like no, maybe don't, I'm not putting money five or ten anymore. Somewhere in there. You, I think, are the winner of that that uh, pool we had. So yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, now how much? Uh, what you call it would make Captain yeah. Marvel? I think yeah, we everyone are. else said it was going to do about eighty million. I said one twenty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're the you're the closest without going over. Yeah. M U, John. Yeah. M-U. Yeah, it went around one fifty. One fifty. Look, guys, I'm telling you. I, I mean, it's not as it's not a big surprise to me. I mean, these things are that movie was propped up by two of the what will be two of the biggest freaking movies. Of almost all freaking time, uh, Avengers Endgame and uh, Infinity War. Unless they screw up in the marketing somewhere on Infinity War and everybody's just turned off and temperatures go cold for some reason, Avengers Infinity War is going to be a monster. Well, my so, buddy, my buddy made a great point. He said that uh, Uncanny Kodiak again. Tell us how you really feel, John, for two dollars. Thank you, Arthur. I appreciate you, bro. No. Um, there, uh, my buddy made a great point. It wasn't even just those things. If you think about it, what were the movies that were out against it this weekend? Mm-hmm. And yeah. and it was wedged in there to become part. Like they they made it so that it was definitely going to be tied into to the last Avengers story. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I got to be honest with you. Let, let's get our predictions on record for Shazam. Where do you think that's going to hit? Now, oh. now the other argument I've heard. Is that uh, from Mike Miller, I do believe, is that everyone is saying high 100s for Shazam. Reason being that this is going to be geared towards kids and parents are going to bring their kids. So with that said, what are your guys' predictions for Shazam? 120. That's going to be opening weekend. I'm afraid to say anything now because of John. But go ahead, Elliot. You you probably you probably uh I wouldn't I wouldn't I would say 120 would probably be mm-hmm. I, I, and now, now here's where I'm gonna take the risk. Ready? Uh oh, you're going down. Ninety mil. Why? Oh wow. Yeah, less than a hundred. Less than a hundred on opening weekend. Why? Is that? Nah. Because it, 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 the costume looks like shit. It does look um, like that stuff. I don't it, like it's that. goofy. Um, if I was a teenage boy, I wouldn't want to go to it. And uh, yeah. So people bring their kids, but look, man. Ideally, people bring their kids to Ant Man. And Ant Man, I, I don't believe even broke a hundred mil on opening weekend. Mm. Mm, no, it did not. Uh, yeah. No, wait. No, I think it was. Oh, that might have been eighty or ninety mil. No. Yeah. So I'm saying about ninety mil, because I think people will bring their kids there. But look, man, it looks like shit. <laughs> the costume looks terrible. The dude's a dope. So, um, look, man, k- kids aren't dumb. Teenagers aren't dumb. I don't think we're talking you about take kids. your girlfriend to watch Shazam. No, but I would take if my, you, if you're, if my you're 10-year-old, 15, 16. my 10, 12 year old, I would for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the numbers have proven that they're whatever, uh, unless Ant-Man went up against something that was more kid oriented, which is possible during that same time. So what might be healthy is to look up. What, what else is coming out that opening weekend? What kids' movies? Is there a Lego movie coming out that same weekend? Mm. That's a good question. I mean, they, they already got the Lego movie out, don't they? Oh, I'm, I'm just saying for an, for an example. Oh, it could be, any, it could be anything. Well, that's yeah, what happened any, this any weekend, though. Movie. That's what happened mm-hmm. this weekend. This weekend was uh, How to Train Your Dragon. and uh, Yeah, that was last weekend, though, wasn't it? Was it? Well, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. How to Train Your Dragon came out like two weeks ago. So what? So what mm-hmm. did come out this weekend? Oh, I don't know. So that's what You're I'm saying. Making a bunch of money, I know that. I saw How to Train Your Dragons doing all right. Yeah, I'm just saying that that uh, <clears throat> thinking about the at least the justification for the the, the success of of Captain Marvel. And you're right, man. And that the Captain Marvel movie, it's 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 not. It's like I was telling my buddy. I I, I w- people aren't don't care about the continuity of comics anymore. Because they haven't read it, they don't. Most normal people only know the continuity of what's happening in the movies, mm-hmm. and they're gonna go see it regardless. They're not. They're not as concerned as we are. Hold on, my dog's barking. Hold on. What? 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 That's my my wife's coming. Let me. Let me. I'll be right back. What? 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 So what's up with you, John? How you doing, player? <laughs> doing good. How about you? Bruh. What's going on in the brand world, my friend? Uh, 
Kanan showed me some new stuff on the pages. And uh, I had a couple backers that asked if uh, I could open back up the original art page perk because we had that up where we were, you know, we were selling 20 of the original art pages. You know, he was going to do 20 traditionally and 28 digitally. And uh, we sold six of those. But, you know, it was December, so I took it off, you know. And, mm -hmm. you know, now they've been seeing his art on, like, drawn and quartered and stuff. They've been showing, showing his actual pencils and so i had a couple people reach out to me and they go hey can you put that uh can you open that tier back up i might want to get a page and so i i talked to kane and he was like yeah yeah we still got 14 pages that he'll draw traditionally if people want to pay for them so you know, that is open back up on the indiegogo and also of course i'm writing the script to brand way of the gun so uh, that is that is what we're doing. But yeah, hmm. man, colors coming in. I wish I could show some of these new color pages I just got in. They, I have to show you no, when we no. get off air or something, man. Yeah, yeah really it's, always, it's always fun to see pages when they're color, man. That that's how they're meant to be. You know, is <laughs> once that paint job's been applied, as long as you got, uh, you know, a, a fantastic uh, colorist on board, man. Oh, man, there's nothing better than seeing really good colored pages. Yeah, there's a page that I that I got the other day that I'm dying to show you guys, man. I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And I was just like, but I can't I can't send it out in my upcoming update because uh, it, it's kind of got some spoilerish stuff in it. So I can't oh, OK. Yeah. But uh, to to my friends like you and Elliot, and then I can oh, probably okay. yeah. show you. Hey, yeah. awesome. Looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> Zade Comics says Dan did profit issues zero through four. Yeah, I'm looking at the profit one. It's actually on Wikipedia. If like you type in profit and, and that's uh, where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wonder if the reason why I think that way about profit is because I only I, back then I wasn't that excited about that kind of art until I saw Stephen Platt. I yeah, really, that's a, he, my my knowledge of profit comes from the plat covers. It must be that I like got interested. Man. You know who else I like so, too? So what you're saying is uh, Dan Panosian's work on profit is highly forgettable. It yeah, I did. I had, I couldn't even remember that he was on it. And and I'm gonna be honest, the I looked. I remember seeing issue one. I used to go to my local comic shop, and the issue one is Rob Liefeld inked by Dan Panosian. Mm. So yeah, issue one, the cover. Is you know it's a live it's a typical life field cover, you know just uh, it might have been a variant. Did, did, what that are you doing been. variants back then? Oh yeah, baby. Uh, yeah, there were there were some like ninety one. I mean, they were doing all that chromium foil and all that stuff, but mm. I didn't see a lot of variants mm. back then. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> bring, bring me back, Antonio. No, oh, oh wow. the chromium foil. I was, I had, I've got like a Hulk that was with the chromium, all you know, X Men comics with all the, you know, the little uh, yeah. shiny X's all over it, and a yeah. bunch of that Age of Apocalypse stuff was done like that. I have a bunch of that Age of Apocalypse, which mm -hmm. I still love that stuff. Yeah, yeah, me too. See, and that that's just it. You know, I mean, a lot of these things get hung up as being, oh, there are gimmicks and stuff. But look, man, when they're done well, I mean, you know, they're beautiful, beautiful covers. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I hate how things always kind of, you know, like, uh, these ones were poorly executed. Let's bring all of them down. Let's stop doing these gimmick covers. Like, no, 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 I, I like them, <laughs> you know, um, and I will continue to buy, you know, the ones that, you know, just like any other piece of art, the ones that pull it all together, ones that are executed well. Yeah. To be to be fair, from my vantage point, I, I was never really interested in that so much. Um but it's understandable but there was a there was a couple of things platt platt was just he did something really special though he was doing something really he was doing the finch thing before finch was doing the finch thing you know with the super mm. detail everywhere and like little pieces and, and little yeah well well platt it, it, if i was to say was doing his best attempt at mcfarlane but trying to render like dale keown oh wow so, yeah Love Dale yeah. Keown. Love and Dale somewhere, Keown. In, somewhere in there is kind of what churned out his plaque. Because Finch was out, I think, right around the same time as well. Um, you know, I mean, Finch was still doing different. Now, now today, um, the last time I checked up on Stephen Platt is his art is almost indistinguishable from David Finch. 
So okay. he's lost. He lost all that that energy and edge that he uh, used to have. There was some good stuff. Remember Soul Saga? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that was when he was actually moving closer to the uh, the Finch style. Yeah, that, I thought that was really good uh, for a split second. Then they only did a couple of issues of that. And then there was the uh, the other one I liked a lot that wasn't his. It was uh, Union with Teixeira. Yeah. yeah. I thought Union was really was really cool. I, I, I love the idea of the white-haired character. I, this is mm -hmm. before so I cared about Supreme at all. But yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. yeah, there, there's definitely some stuff. What I love about the '90s, and I'll and and I'll always grant this to to all, all the '90s enthusiasts, is that it. And it's because to this day, even though I used to criticize Rob a lot, what I've come around to enjoy him more now. And the reason why I enjoy him is because I think is what you're saying. Comics back then got me excited, got me pumped mm -hmm. up. And I remember when I, when he when I saw that image of was it Mr. X or Major X or Major X? Yeah, I was mm -hmm. like, I was, I, I had no idea what it was. <laughs> I was, I, and my, my brain was telling me it's probably some kind of Marvel X Men something garbage, but my, but my eyes were telling me that's cool, and I think yeah. that's the most exciting thing about the '90s work is that it was so exciting. It, um, when Rob was doing those uh, Teen Titans books, and like. 10 years, six, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I thought the yeah, same I, I was working on them with them. Yeah. Were you really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, was his, I, I was his assistant at that time. Yeah. I remember I was light boxing like Robin, Cyborg. Yeah. All those. That's people. cool. Yeah. I thought it was good. I really, like, I was excited about it. And I kept saying, I don't know. He doesn't draw feet. <laughs> but the reality was I was still pumped up about it. And, yeah. Uh, I think that's the someone here in the chat just mentioned Silvestri. I think the um yeah, he's he's still he's he's my favorite. And I, I also like him because he evolved the 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 texture of that work, the excitement of that work into something that I still enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, uh, kind of scratchy energetic yeah. line, yeah. Yeah, remember that he did that uh he did that cover for Invincible that I thought was great and he did a um there was something else he or maybe it wasn't invincible maybe it was witchblade i don't remember it was something like that and i was like damn that looks so good it, it's just exciting and, and, and there's a there's a principle in that uh oh diablo arizona five dollars as a jerk monger fan we need a catchy name jerk offs jerky boys circle jerks mongerloids what do you think no <sighs> monger mafia please don't do anything else um but no i think it's uh um I I, th I love that about the work, and I think mm -hmm. that transition. What what I think what carried it over for me was Joe Mad. I think really brought the next wave of that over for me, and that's yeah. where I, I landed on him. That's where I landed. Um, Jim Lee to this day, uh, I'm like, yeah, it's, I'm I'm here or there with him, but but um, but I still recognize the that the strength of his work is it's like a billboard. You know, when he draws anything, people get excited about it, even if it's not substantive. Um, although he did some, there was a couple of designs, really the one in particular he did for DC New 52 that I thought was excellent, man. And, and it would never make it to the comics. I'm sure it was too too difficult to draw was his Aquaman design. Did you ever see that? His original Aquaman design? Uh, I may have. It was, uh, um, I have to look for it, but it's, it. He basically did Aquaman with like a crab shell, like the under part of a crab. That was the that was the chest part of his of his armor. It was more like a like a aquatic design. It was sick. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, all I could think of was like I would never want to draw that panel after yeah. panel. Yeah. Oddly enough, for as great as um, Jim Lee is, <coughs> his designs um, always fall flat. And so I'm trying I definitely to definitely like that new 52 up. Superman. Yeah, that was a Nazi Superman. I yeah, that just not, yeah, I wasn't feeling that. I gotta be real. Uh -huh. Not love yeah, him. He, he's not that great. He's not, he's a pretty weak designer. Jeremiah Jones for five dollars. Thank you, my friend. Monger Mafia the Diablo Arizona for two dollars. Monger Lloyds is cool, <laughs> but okay, Monger Mafia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um uh, Cam eleven thirty eight says Jim Lee's new fifty two were not good. No, most part I wasn't impressed with it. I mean, Batman was, I don't know, man. I like Batman with the hard to screw up Batman. Just except I didn't like the way they did that. They've got that little weird yellow outline around. I don't like that. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that was dumb. That was the dumbest change I ever saw. <laughs> yeah, I don't care for that. I don't care for that. I think, you know, I think they're trying to, I think they were trying to bring in the yellow from the original oval. Yeah, and I, I get that, but no. But it doesn't work. <laughs> yes, that's 100% what they were doing. Um, yeah, and it was, you should have brought back the oval. Yeah, that would have been better. I could have lived with that. Yeah, I would have like, oh, they got the oval back. I grew up. I mean, with who 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 approves these things? Like, yeah, yeah, that that's going to be the hot ticket. There, we're just going to outline it with yellow. Jim Lee, <laughs> he's the uh, artist. <laughs> that is so terrible. <laughs> I mean, he's a fantastic artist. I, I, you know, I almost feel like I have to say that anytime I'm about to criticize him. But yeah, his sense of design for costumes is oh, it's so bad. It's so many pros that shit on Jim Lee, though. I'd be tripping out. I mean, I mean, I've talked to a couple artists and they'd be like, you know, I don't really like Jim Lee. So and I was like, what? <laughs> I, I thought he'd be, you know, especially if we're about the same age, I, I suspect that he'd be an influence. But they no, yeah, well, the art so. art wise. He, yeah. Style wise. He's a high standard. I mean, anyone anyone kind of taking a shot at his ability to uh, execute a awesome superhero. Because like um, Hush, Batman Hush, yeah. that was mm -hmm. great. <laughs> I yes. was like, are you high? Batman Hush yeah. looked incredible. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, oh. and, and I and I love talking about that because when we look at comics, I don't know why. I don't know if these become special privileges or what, um, but at least in the modern modern times, I mean, the best comics, guys, I, I tell you, it's when the, the panel counts are like, no more than four. I mean, on average, on average, no more than four panels on a page. And you load up with splash page and double page splashes. Hush is you a visual Bible yeah. of how to execute a, a great looking comic book. That's why they keep reprinting and, that shit. <laughs> yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went through. I've counted out like all the panels. Like I, I did. A, I was gonna do a video on it a long time ago, because I'm a stickler. Like that and uh, Old Man Logan, the uh, Mark Miller and uh, McNiven book. Oh, McNiven, uh, great. Yeah, He's amazing. Same, same thing. Same thing. Jesus I mean, it's like Christ, four panels. Yeah, like, like four panels and uh, splashes and double page splashes, and uh, I'm, I, comics are visual. Um, I really Kirby, like Kirby, um, even Kirby. You know, look at Kirby. Oh, Big absolutely. Double page flashes, flash pages. I, you know, and talking to Mike. You know, Mike Miller. You know, he's like, he seemed to be adverse to double page splashes, and then I'm just like, why? What? <laughs> like, we, you know, you want to, you want to put all the, you want to put the action right in the reader's lap. So uh, well, see, I'm adverse. I'm, I'm adverse to dull double page splashes or dull splash pages i mean look at some of the uh, some of the splash pages they've done at marvel in recent years and straight on shot just boring Ugh. yeah people don't understand that they, they've lost they've lost a sense of the art form and uh they you know uh, another bible is how to draw comics the marvel way you know anchor your brain back to that and yeah. try to reach some of those goals um, it, because it is not, it is, is not the way that Marvel draws comics now. It's not. It, it should be the. It should be the standard, e even in today. And it's not. They. They. It, it's like the art world when it used to be Rembrandt's and you know these very, you know, complicated portraits, these beautiful portraits and masters like perfecting their craft, and uh, now it's kind of like uh, I'm just gonna shit on a. Page, you know Jackson Pollock, and uh, yeah, you know mm -hmm. convince everybody that this is great art. You know so. what's interesting? I, I've often commented that that work was more. I always felt it was more commercial, but it was um, or I should say Pollock. No, no, no. Like John Buscema's work and the, the old comic stuff. Um, in a way, what it was, I think, was that um. Because it was it was so much comic going on, they were publishing so frequently. Those guys didn't draw the way some of the modern. Um, I, I compare them more. I think we had this conversation the other night. I think on uh, with you uh, on the Earth Show or whatever. But I think that there's a um, 
I've often compared some of these comic books to uh, comic art to uh, to um, to like being commercial or being like uh, like all the all like I always come I always use Coipel as an example. I think he's one of my favorite modern artists. And when he draws anything, it looks like it's taking him weeks to draw that panel. Mm -hmm. um, when I see, but when I see um, John Buscema, I know he he developed a style and a system to tell his stories more more uh, more uh, succinctly, yeah. and more efficiently. Um, yeah. But to your point, though, their structure was masterful, and so even though they were using what some people think are dated styles, they were they were still so good. Like like you said, like like Jack Kirby's work was literally leaping off the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not the style of Busum or whatever. It's the bones. It's the bones yeah. that are there. Yeah. It's uh it's when you flip through that book, you know, it's the punch cycle. You know, where where's the best point to start and end a, a punch if you're if you have to draw a punch. It, it's not um the top of the movement it's as far reaching as far back as you can possibly reach and swinging as far forward like those are your two shots uh the everything in the middle is like it, it becomes more boring you know more mediocre more generic and then as it moves back forward and you get to the very end of that punch cycle where he's at you know full bend full extension yeah, then yeah. that's that's your most exciting shot. Yeah, they turn um, they turn the art into a science. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 look at the uh, before and after pages. So they 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 show like two shots of like the same page, but one is basically uh, you know maybe this is how DC Comics would do it, and it it, it would be fine. It would be storytelling. It'd be you know Chris Somney type layouts. And uh, then the other one would be the Marvel way. And the Marvel way would be in your face, you know, Dr. Doom kind of, you know, the upshot of Dr. Doom. Uh, you know, you when, when you're having an argument in an office, I, you know, it's like you're leaning on your desk. You're leaning forward. You know, you're chomping on the on the cigar type things. You know, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hit you on that so, one, John. Yeah. I now. Since you brought now, up now, it's artists. modern. Age. Well, hmm. no, I think I think Chris Somney is just as strong. I think he's, but I, I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to I'm going to throw out this little. Well, before I go, let me read a couple of these super chats. Thank you very much for the mm -hmm. super chats, my friends. Huge ass. Life of style gave us corn nuts. Corn gone wrong. Uh, okay. Uh, Diablo Arizona says, "What does Macho Man think of Liefeld's Captain America?" Ooh, that chest thing was weird. But I heard, I saw someone do a draw over. I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I actually kind of have an interesting theory about this. I think what of all of those people, I don't think Somni should be lumped in with some of those guys. I think that that's he's actually very excellent. What I think though is there's a. I look at these now like movie directors. For all the grief that people give Michael Bay. I think the kind of stuff we're talking about is like a Michael Bay sort of directing where everything's exaggerated, made slow motion. I actually like Michael Bay just fine. I don't, you know, I, I see him for what it is, what he is. Yeah. Visually oh, yeah. he's great. Yeah. yeah. He's a visually, he tells a story very, very bombastically. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Somni, I think is a little more understated, like, like an Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. So, but, but, but I think what's wrong is that people always put him together with all the rest of those artists at Marvel. I don't think that's fair because those artists don't have the bones that those guys have. If you look at the way that Somni uses his, his spots as blacks, I mean, he's really is. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's, that's stuff that you or I just kind of appreciate, you know, it's yeah. like that, that's what artists just kind of like it, but we're talking mainstream superhero comics. You need to be going balls to the wall um comics are on its dying breath and we're over here patting ourselves on the back because someone spots blacks right take take yourself out take yourself out of the comic book world for a second and and listen to that well he, he spots blacks magnific magnificently yeah but that was the kind of stuff that our our predecessors cared about as well well yeah they do but it but it but it's not that that isn't what is going to drive people into um 
you know, comic shops. If, if spotting blacks mattered, Mignola, Mike Mignola would be the king of the world. Well, so Frank Miller would be, well, Frank Miller is pretty much king of the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. But no, saw... it, it's that, it's that action, man. It's that mainstream fast and the furious, uh, type movie. It's avatar. It's, it's that slick, uh, aggressive style. And it's not wallpaper. It's not noir. It's not something that you would find in Vertigo Comics that has right now in modern times has no place at a company like Marvel or DC. They, they, need to, they need to be firing on all cylinders. It needs to be a murderer's row of commercial guys. And just the other day, I heard something about the Dio saying that there's almost like a glut in talent um, for what are the amount of books coming out. Yeah. Uh, no, there's not. They keep hiring people because they can spot blacks or because they, oh, they do this very Alfred Hitchcockian um, <laughs> storytelling. Like, look, that doesn't mean anything to a kid. A kid wants Rob Liefeld. A kid wants, uh, a, you know, a new hot fire Jim Lee. That's what kids want. They want things that are in their face, balls to the wall. Grab the reader by the throat and look. If a book is, if a company is putting out 50 titles a month, you know, and Joe Schmo walks into the comic shop, you know, it may take 50 titles that are all on fire to make him buy five. If everyone is not on fire, he might walk out of there with zero. I've walked out of comic shops with zero before, no sweat off my back. Wow. And, uh, you know, maybe they pull one. Right now, people are pulling one, they're pulling two, or maybe they're pulling five. We need them to be pulling 30. Uh, the comic shops need them to be pulling 30. So the mainstream companies have to be working on hot fire right now. And they're not. They're patting each other on the back because they're the artist artist. They want they want people that can draw the executed triangular. No, get out of here. We need in your we need new Jack Kirby's. We need new Todd McFarlane's, new Jim Lee's. We need a whole new rush of new talent that is just being ignored. And I think people in the comic industry has just resigned themselves that it's going to die and they're going to die with it peacefully. And they're going to say, well, there was nothing we could do at this point except grab our checks and go. I, I actually think you made a good point there, John. I think that, um, John I think never makes a good point. Stop it. <laughs> no, I, I think I, I, I always talk about having the right tool for the job. And when it comes to superhero comics in particular, if you want to do a quiet story, and I would agree with that any other time in my discussion on this, if I was doing a quiet story or even a, a 1940s character or uh, like, like Lobster Johnson, for example, from Hellboy universe, he's a perfect artist. Somni would be a perfect artist for something like that. Yeah. Uh, Son yeah. is a perfect artist for Hellboy if he if he tried. Uh, maybe not Hellboy, but he's no, no, no he wouldn't be good for Hellboy because Hellboy is a lot more gritty. Um, you made an interesting comment about Frank Miller though, because Frank Miller, Frank. Well, I think what makes Frank Miller great is probably that he does both. He uses bombastic language in his in his figures and forms, but he uses some of those interesting noir things. So he's, I think that's what kind of pulled him ahead of the pack, perhaps. But I think you're right. I think that I, I have to agree with you that that what this industry needed was adrenaline, not a sedative. And, yeah. And uh, it might be too late now, but that was what it needed all along was some more of that. So why do you think they moved so far away? Because I don't think I don't I don't look at the 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 because it's, it's writers, it's writers and editors, and editors are primarily uh, failed writers. And a lot of the writers in the comic book industry hate everything to do with the 90s because they they feel that they should have been more successful, not these artists who went and formed and, and stuck their hands above the crowd and said, I think we can make our own company. And the writers did not feel like they were brought along. So as the years progressed and after the boom was over and all this anti-90s, uh, quote, image style, um, hatred started manifesting and it kept out all these bombastic styles and all these shots of adrenaline adrenaline uh, for these sedated because that's what writers like they like vertigo 
They like uh, they like the low selling DC titles. That's what that's what writers like. That's a writer's writer's book. So it's like uh, it's it's basically like the um, if I was following if I was going to take my my now my film analogy further, you basically just identify what's wrong with the Academy Awards. It's mm. themselves on the back, and but it's always low selling films that rely on the ones they criticize, like the Marvel movies. Everybody criticizes the Marvel movies that's so formulaic, but they're making billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, these quiet films, which are which are just fine. We need those too, perhaps. Um, but those are those are those shouldn't dictate the the industry. And and right now in comics, that that yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Imagine what the film industry would be doing without Marvel right now. Right. And DC. I mean, nobody would be going to movies, essentially. You know, I mean, it would be a huge drought in um, entertainment. And, uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you took away all that fun, in-your-face stuff and all you left down were the human stories, and look, I'm fine with human stories. I, I think even the, the most bombastic comic can incorporate, you know, the artsy-fartsy stuff uh, to a certain degree. Um, and especially in a healthy market. So in a healthy market, you know, look, you can have your art film, you can have your your slow mo look look at me do Captain America standing here kind of dully. Um, but we're not we're not in a healthy market. We're in a mm. poison poison market right now, and it, it's gone undiagnosed for far too long. And the people who've made these decisions don't want to admit that they're wrong, and they've been here for twenty years. You think they just want to, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I've been fucking up. Because they. I think they think, I think they think that they that they really, really understand business and that they've really had a, a hold of all this stuff stuff for so long. But what I what I what I believe is I believe that no, they were just reaping the benefits of a returning market, just the natural ebb and flow mm -hmm. of the market, the ups and downs. But because we've had so many bad decision makers in the driver's seats for so long now. The, the, the low has just gotten lower and lower and lower. And they're, they're, they've kept out the people that would have been the natural rise back up. So when when you say there, when Dan DiDio says there's a t like a talent drought, you know, um, explain Matthew Weldon. Explain Kanan White. Where, where were your talent scouts with them? Why, why weren't they being groomed 10 years ago to be brought along? Why wasn't uh, why wasn't the moment Kanan was working on Uber? Why wasn't he being reached out to by Marvel and saying, "Look, man, whether or not we feel that you're at the level that we want you at, we want you to know that we have interest in you, and maybe it'll take a year, but we want to groom you to become the next big thing at Marvel." Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Look, Kanan was said, "Hell yeah!" He was said, "Thanks, appreciate it." work with me you know, and uh, these guys are too dumb they're too fucking dumb it's funny um, you say that because when i that that's uh i mean maybe you don't care for my work that much but that that's the experience that i had uh, when i went to D, to dc invited me to participate in that that the second year they did that that uh that academy or program or whatever they had and uh I was approached by one of the, the 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 executives that were involved with that, and they told me I needed to I needed to submit my work. They really wanted to see me in that program, and I was getting a lot of like heavy coded language, like you you need to come with this. If you don't come, you, you, this is going to be a big problem. You, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna do well. Please 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 please. So I finally did. I took a week, and that is my first year, and I was independent. I took a week to just do the samples. I made them super tight, sent them in. I got a rejection letter and everybody that got the work that that got that that first class that they had was all that kind of art very understated very calm and i was like ah oh. and i remember yeah. thinking i want i wonder where where i went wrong but that's why that's when i decided i'm just going to keep doing my own thing yeah well I, I i can tell you i mean clearly i like your art but i haven't seen your sequentials you know i mean right. Bottom line is it's it's in that execution of the sequentials. It's the when do you use a splash? When do you use a double page splash? How does your one panel flow to the next panel? How, how do all these things work together? This this total package that is, you know, Elliot. So 
yeah, it, it's hard to say, but I, I've seen examples of everybody's art that I've, you know, criticized. I've seen, I've seen the full package and, um, you know, yours is a cartoonier style, but you know, how is it executed in the sequentials? You know, are you pulling from how to draw comics the Marvel way? If so, then I say the bones are right. I mean, it's, it's really in the bones guys. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, can you get in there? Can you make that drawing exciting, that panel exciting? McFarlane could make that panel exciting. Um, oh, yeah. You know, wind blowing, papers blowing. Um, you know, Rob, you know, the the his stuff is high energy, man. And I love his stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I, whatever, I don't have to explain. I'm a big Rob fan. Um, same with Jim. The, the yelling faces on both Rob and Jim, man, are, you know, money they're money in the bank and um you know people don't they don't appreciate it because it's all about the subtleties now and uh you know the subtleties are great in in a, in a place like vertigo but look you know if you want your company to start looking like vertigo or your industry to start looking like vertigo then don't be surprised when your sales reflect that of vertigo and where did axel alonso come from the guy who was in charge of marvel comics for what the last I don't know, 10 years? Well, he's a Vertigo editor. Mm. Mm. Hot fire. Hot fire, guys. That's the, that's the guy. That's the artsy you know, mustache twirler, finger snapper that you're going to put in charge of Marvel Comics. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean... I mean, these things are just so obvious, but I, I think everybody's so in the box. You know, I, I'm grateful that on one hand that I, I was so absent from the industry that that I'm able to keep somewhat of a perspective. You know, I had to get in work, get out and then back to a real job. So because I'm a 90s guy, <laughs> you know, and me getting into Marvel was skin of my teeth. You know, nobody, no DC has ever reached out to me in my life. DC has never reached out to me. I, I've sent them, you know, plenty of stuff, um, got in contact with them, and it's always, oh, yeah, 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 keep, you know, keep sending stuff. Um, Marvel was the same way, except that I was a, a little bit more aggressive because I'm a Marvel guy. And uh, with them, it was like, yeah, okay, more stuff. It got anything for me? Got anything for me? You know? Oh, yeah. Well, we're, we're looking for the right project for you. Um, what do you mean? If it's got spandex, it's the right project for me. I'm a superhero guy. So that is um, the problem with this industry. And nobody's going to fess up to it because they think they've been making the right moves for, you know, 15, whatever, 20 years now. And uh, that was keeping 90s guys out. And I think we've lost an entire generation of 90s style artists who would have been the natural flow back into this uh, you know, industry at the mainstream level. Now, look, the independents, independents can do whatever they want. I've always tried to draw a distinction between mainstream superhero comics and the independent market. You know, you can have your Mike Mignola's doing Hellboy. You can have whatever one you want. And if it's a healthy market, then by all means, you know, places and things like Vertigo for little artsy projects are great. You know, Marvel, start, start up an, your own imprint and do your own things in a healthy market. Experiment. Experimentation is great. Um, but the bottom line is the indie, mar the indie market is there for all the experimentation that you can possibly ever need or dream of. Um, the only problem is that Marvel lost its way. DC lost its way. And now everybody is trying to be Vertigo. So, mm -hmm. great point. Uh, five dollars super chat from DJ Kong. Is that right? Uh, this is a fantastic stream, guys. Thank you for sharing these insights. Well, you know, it's not often that uh, I get blessed by these wonderful gentlemen. <laughs> Cecil, <laughs> I, I just checked the chat. Cecil said, Erica Henderson changed the game, Grandpa. It's true, it's true, that is true. Mm -hmm. You know, but look, I mean, you know, there's a place for everybody in this industry. And, you know, Erica Henderson would be fine at a place like Marvel. Um, Ten years ago? Not today. Not right now. Not right now. Right now, Marvel and DC need to uphold their responsibility to the market, to the retailers, and produce the highest quality, most commercial art. 
and stories that can possibly be done. But they're busy snapping their fingers and playing politics than uh, they are for actually watching over their, um, you know, business. I missed all that last part because I I got I got kicked off my own stream. Oh, welcome back, Elliot. I'm back. I'm back. I, there's um, two of me. I see. Oh, oh. sweet. Well, that's okay. I'm tripping out. I'm tripping yeah. out. <laughs> uh, basically, I said um, Cecil was in chat and he was saying that. Erica Henderson, did you hear that part? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. that you know that she's the new water hot fire, and I'm grandpa. And I, I and I'm saying there is a place for people like Erica Henderson, and uh, even at a place like Marvel. But it was ten years ago, and when the when the market was still healthy. Right now, it's on life support, and you know Marvel and DC need to uphold their responsibility and be producing the the most commercial content that it could be doing right now. Um, cause the independents are always going to do what the independents do. You know, they don't care. You know, they get 5,000, 10,000 sales. They're going to keep on trucking. Um, but Marvel and DC need to do an about face. They need to recognize that the problem starts at editorial and it can be solved through editorial. Um, meaning that put the vertigo people into vertigo or release them and allow them to go to the independent market and survive. In the meantime, uh, cultivate your, your artists um, bring in the, the, you know, start looking about five years in the future, what you need to be doing, who are, who are the most commercial people in the, in the independent market? Uh, up until recently, I would have said Ryan Otley, you know, like why isn't Ryan Otley working somewhere? Um, but he finally finished his invincible role and made his way to Marvel. Uh, you know, sadly, I, you know, I think Ryan's, I, I don't I don't know if Ryan's time spent on Invincible and look Ryan's fantastic artist, um, but I don't think his time spent on Invincible has done him any favors. His old school style when he was much more of a Greg Capullo type artist um, was dynamite, and he had to dumb it down to uh, try to be whatever that keep that Corey Corey Walker style. And I don't think it did him any favors. I mean, because that's kind of, you know, it's a little bit of the sedated stuff. Now, I'm, I'm sure his, uh, I'm, I'm sure he has good bones. So, but that rendering, that that super awesome stuff he was doing back in the day, yeah, I don't really see that anymore. I don't remember his work that, that far back. When, do, when, when was he doing that kind of stuff? Um, back when we were working <clears throat> on Digital Webbing Presents. Yeah, that was my, oh, like my Ed Duke Shy. I love Ed Duke Shy. Love yeah. him. He is yeah, that, yeah, that was person. my and I do believe his first work. Yeah. yeah. Ed's a dear yeah this is before I this is back when we were nobodies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was like, yeah. yeah, that's like I always tell people about Ed Duke Shy, man. I love Ed. I you know, he called me a couple weeks ago and I talked to him. I was like, I love Ed. He is an incredible human being. Mm -hmm. I was just man, so generous and just willing to help people and just <clears throat> You know, yeah, he pops in my streams from time to time. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah he, he told me he's been watching what some of us have been doing, and mm -hmm. and uh, he, <laughs> he's uh, he's like, I I see what you guys are doing, and I was like, <laughs> but obviously he doesn't want to hop in the water, but I mean, he yeah. respects the hustle. So yeah, yeah, we're we're making moves, man. Um, because the, the industry is going to die a slow death and we're, we're going to do whatever we can to save a part of it. And, uh, you know, be it through our own projects through other comics gate creators projects, you know, um, yeah, we're going to do what we can do to, uh, keep, keep the comic book, uh, art form alive. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, sadly Marvel and DC, they're not interested in that. Cause I, I think they have to admit, I think they would have to admit that, you know, th that a lot of the decisions they've made over the last 10 years are the fault of certain people. And probably the best thing to do is to remove uh, these certain people from their positions and complete course correction is what would be needed. And uh, that that's why I don't think it's going to happen. That's why I don't think that anything is really going to get better. Uh, mm -hmm. CB Sabalski, I, I didn't, I didn't know him well enough when he took over for um, Axel Alonso. So I had, I had held out some hope that, you know, like maybe you're a reasonable guy and you, you know, he's not. So uh, it's the same. It's the same person with a different face. 
I got another super. And, and he likes here. food and cats. Uh, M Hopkins zero eight one nine for five bucks says Marvel is a writer first company. They constantly move artists from book to book, like Chris Bacalo, and even DC with George Jorge Jimenez. Well, that's true. Yeah, they're all writer first. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the biggest names over the last one or twenty years have. You know, it, it's almost like SJWs, right? It's like they 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 want equality. Um, so their view of equality, though, is instead of raising, you know, the the population or statuses of minority people, they want to chop off um, the you know what are the white patriarchy. You know, like that's equality. Now now that we've leveled you down, now that we've broke apart this whatever institutionalized you know, fill in the blank. Uh, now we have equality because now there are way more, uh, what are white people being unemployed or something like that would ultimately be their goal. Um, not that, not to actually raise people up, but to chop it off, to chop that off. And, uh, yeah, so Marvel is a writer first company and that's what they did. They, they chopped off <laughs> all the attention that the artists got so that the writers would be in charge. But look, the attention that the writers bring is not the same amount of attention that all the artists would have brought. I definitely agree well. with that. But mm -hmm. a lot of that was done as a direct result of the image founding. Uh, you know, I, I, I used to love when I'd go to the comic store and it'd be like Claremont, Lee, Williams on the front cover. And then, mm -hmm. I, and then, then they all dipped over the image and then they stopped putting like the, the names of the people on you know, I'm, they're back doing it now, but I mean, for a while, they wouldn't even put the, the artist names on the cover anymore because they didn't want to help them get too hot. Well, I heard I heard uh, a, a legend a while back that um, that there may have been a, a the big the, the, the reason why they stopped. They, they did that was they didn't want to have another uprising happen like what happened with Image in the first place. That's what I just said. Yeah. No, uh, I'm, saying, I'm saying that that's why they did that was because they didn't want that to happen again. That's why. Yeah, that's why they start putting their names on it. That's what I'm saying. They don't want to yeah. build up another superstar set of artists and then have them revolt and, and right, have and too leave. much power. Because when Marvel, when those guys left Marvel, man, that left that that almost oh, trust me, decimated that company. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. With yeah, but the, the, and thing, the thing is, that, I don't know. I've heard that before, but but it's I, I don't think it's really about that. Because look, if you can build up a artist and your fear of is that the artist will revolt and form their own company and make an image, then wouldn't it be the same with writers that if you built up the writers that wouldn't you be afraid that the writers would revolt and make their own company and then they would take them there? It's not about that. I, I think it I think it sounds good. I think it's a nice cover for the writers, but it's about the writers keeping power. That's all it's about. No, I, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you there. But I think that there is something to be said about. I think you, you made the point best earlier. The, the comic books are a visual medium. Now, there was a time when comics and writing, uh, art and writing, made the comics. And I think maybe, maybe it should never have turned into that in the first place, uh, as far as becoming so artist centric. But, uh, but, I mean, because uh, like what Antonio just pointed out. Lee and Claremont were great. Lee by himself, eh, you know, did it? How did it? How, I mean, and and ultimately, did Lee by himself pull off a great situation for himself and and uh, an image, or was he able to just take the success of what Image started as and then transfer it over to back working for DC? But they were losing money by his right. own admission. Wildstorm had started to lose money. That he would never. It, trust me. And I, I know I don't know Jim Lee, but I suspect if he was in the same type of position of a Todd McFarlane financially, he would have never gave Wildstorm over to DC because he would be getting more money on his own, being his own boss. Right, right, right. I mean, it right. just makes sense. That's why you formed your own company in the first place. Right. Well, that's why you get out of San Diego, Mike Miller. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, guys. I mean, Jim ran a company in San Diego. Fucking Ego. Um, that's not cheap. And uh, then he has artists that he has to pay. I mean, he had a whole host of artists that he had to pay. That's not cheap. Office people, accountants, lawyers, all that stuff. It's not cheap. And then you live in San Diego. And everybody you hire probably lives in San Diego. 
McFarlane mm. was doing his own thing in like Arizona. And he had uh, what True. Oregon as well because I knew he had that comic shop up there, the Spider's Web. And uh, I know he used to have that. I, I'm sure it's closed down that, now. Yeah, but... that's pennies compared to what. You oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, but uh, always like he's like oh, as a comic book to... studio. Yeah, yeah. I was like, mm. Mm. Oh, I forgot that he was in in uh, Arizona for a while there. Mm-hmm. I thought they all were in California for a minute. Uh, so was uh, t- um, Top Cow was in San Diego too, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I think it's like Century City or something like that. Uh, out by LA yeah. or uh, in LA. You can say whatever they want about Todd, but Todd's been smart and and managed to, you know, where he's not solely dependent on spawn income for money. Especially that toy line, that's genius stuff, man. All the like, licensing that he's done and just Matt, my goodness, I I would love to pick his brain. <laughs> yeah, well, he uh, bottom line is he didn't overextend. <clears throat> You know, he 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 didn't put all of his eggs into the comic book basket, which is probably why a lot of these guys are, you know, like I have to imagine that you, you know, Mark Silvestri is probably hurting. Yeah, um, but this is that, you know, we we talked about that on my my channel the other day. It was me and Kanan, and and we were talking about okay, out of everybody that was the original Image founders, it's pretty clear. I mean, because I'm not going to count Robert Kirkman, even though he's a partner now, but I'm talking about the original seven or whatever that founded mm-hmm. Image. You know, Todd clearly is the winner money wise, but then next in line should have been Mark and Jim Lee because Mark had a couple of TV shows that got developed from from uh, from his properties, video games, video games. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was doing the thing. And then for for a second there, he left image and just did top cow for a second and then brought back the image. So I was like he was in a position where he should have been maybe not as big as Todd, but he should have been right after Todd. And then I would have said Jim, cause I don't know. Rob was putting too many books out. I thought Rob way overextended himself. And I love Rob. You know, it's like, I love Rob. I bought so much. Yeah, Rob I, I think he over- overextended himself as much as the other guys did. Yeah. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know hearing uh, Shelby right there at the end, I, I, I remember I was talking to him sometime late last year and he had talked about, yeah, he had to get up out of there. He he got out of there right before everything just turned to crap because he just saw something was about to happen. And he was like, soon as I left, it wasn't it didn't last much longer. So yeah. I was just like, hmm. But yeah, Mark, Mark should have been number two, I thought. The way he leveraged things, I thought, you know, you know, getting TV, you know, TV shows developed and everything. Obviously, Eric Larson had the Savage Dragon cartoon and there was a Wildcats cartoon. But I, like I said, I thought Jim should have been at least number three on that. I thought he'd be number two or one. I thought him and Todd would be battling. But Todd just had like one book and he was just killing it with everything else, that toy line and all that. I was just I was just amazed with how Todd has pretty much consistently just put out spawn stuff and has been able to be the number one guy for so long. <laughs> Yeah, well, Jim is probably going to be doing okay. I mean, because oh, yeah, yeah, he he, made a ton of money. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) yeah. Well, one, you don't sell your company if your company is you know making you a mint. Um, But he sold his company to DC, and that now he spends corporate money. Yeah, and I'm he gets to keep his own money and spend corporate money. So Jim probably is number two right now for you know. Well, I don't know who's what now. I, but, no, uh, I think Tim's. I think Jim's good. I think he's yeah. real good. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jim's he's getting, for shit. Yeah, Unless, yeah, he's making a ton of money from DC, yeah. and they're paying. They pay him premium, premium dollars, and he's yeah. got a lot of power and influence there. So I hear it, he likes to gamble, though. <laughs> I hate it. But uh, I'm, I, not man, I love a, I'm not saying he's a degenerate gambler, but I do hear he likes to gamble. Hmm. Hey, I, I've gone to a casino a few times and when you know, there's uh I, I have fun. But mm-hmm. I, you have to be careful when you go though, because mm-hmm. I always laugh when I hear these old stories of like Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan going to these places and dropping like three hundred, four hundred thousand in in a night. I was like <laughs> he's like, You gotta he said, You're looking at it from a guy that's working forty hours a week and you know, probably making thirty five, forty grand a year. He said, I'm making ten 20 30 million dollars a year he's like so yeah three hundred thousand dollars to me is different from three hundred thousand dollars to you 
Yeah, but that money don't last. Yeah, trust me. You you keep hearing about who has to file bankruptcy and all this kind of thing. Because yeah. uh, a- athletes are always one injury away from their career ending. Well, so, yeah. I when, actually, I was, um, when I was younger, I worked with a. Uh, had I, I don't I can't remember his name, Kenny something, but he was an ex ex baseball player, and uh, he had his own baseball card and everything. He worked in a factory with me. Oh wow! Yeah, he gave me my uh, um, my original four track or yeah four track recorder, drum machine, uh, this really nice keyboard, and because uh, he bought all this stuff for his wife, microphones, everything. He bought all this stuff for his wife because she was going to do like an R and B. I don't know, like singing thing or something. And he said it only ended up staying in his basement. So he gave it to me and my buddy for like, I don't know, like a six pack. <laughs> so, wow. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, a- athletes, you know, that money don't last. And, uh, you know, when you're, if you're a big, if you're a big, uh, big spender, you know, 300,000, you know, I-, I think they act like it's no thing, but I think it's probably more like, yeah, I spent three hundred thousand dollars. You know, it's like humble brag. And if they're smart, they've never done another bet like that in their life. Uh, um, Michael yeah. Jordan, they covered him. Michael Jordan's a notorious gambler. You know, especially when he's golfing. You know, they're shooting like a hundred thousand a hole and stuff. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can't yeah. believe. It. Yeah, well, like, you know, he's he's a Todd McFarlane. He did he diversified. He's got. You know Jordan shoes and you know yeah multi billionaire yeah billionaire all that yeah so it's like you know, owns yeah. owns a sports franchise all People that yeah shoot each other for his shoes that's how popular they are <sighs> yeah but so, I wish they didn't he could, they could make those shoes cheaper and then that would alleviate a lot of that but that's the whole point can you of imagine it. if he were shooting each other for McFarland toys oh oh that that would mean Todd's balling. <laughs> I mean, my God, man, Todd, Todd like I said, I, I respect Todd so much. Just forget the spawn stuff, which, you know, I bought a bunch of that. But the fact that I just love I love seeing people win, man. I love seeing smart business people able to, you know, take 50 and make it a thousand. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Mm-hmm. I like watching this. Like, that's why, you know, you'd hear Todd talk. Sometimes he'd be so animated, you wouldn't think he's as smart as he is. I hate to say that, but he'd be like, oh, man, so uh, it's really cool. We're going to get into the toys. And I'd be like, you never think this guy is going to generate a billion dollars. And next thing you know, you keep seeing that money stacking up. Mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, when he bought the McGuire baseball and all that, he spent like $4 million on the bike. I was like, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Said, but he like, did that as a business move. Yeah, he'd, yeah. He'd, he'd make headlines and get people talking about him. It, it it would make it would entrench him into the American culture a little bit deeper. So yeah, and he also said that there were some sports people that he was trying to impress. And uh, I think what was it that he owned part of uh, NHL team for a little while and he sold his stake in it. I, I, was, I was like, man, yeah, like was, Oilers or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, team, I think. yeah, or, yeah. He had, yeah, but I mean, that's the thing. I'm, I really, really dig the way Todd had fallen has handled his business man i was just like that's what it, that's that's the thing you know because when i see mark silvestri with the way top cow i thought top cow had stuff set up where they should be a little bit strong i mean the darkness looked like it was on fire it was red hot i thought you know he had garth ennis on it i was like man he should be although i think they did option the movie rights to that but it just never was uh yeah you know, but everything gets option at some yeah point. yeah and i was like man you know and he had obviously the uh, was it Cy Cy force or whatever cyber force cyber force yeah yeah i thought i mean it was some really cool stuff there i mean not his art's incredible and which blade they got that made into a television well, we were talking about that too they picked the wrong actress for that they picked the wrong actress because she had uh she had substance abuse problems and then that's what ended up canceling that show because that show was doing good numbers on tnt they could have made a lot more money off that. You picked the wrong actress, boom, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I wonder how many actresses wanted to be on that show, though, in the first place, you know? I wonder if that was just uh, how many Well, times? if it would have had the actual costume, it would have been hot fire. Oh, yeah, yeah that's another. Yeah, I didn't like the way they did it. They didn't have the budget, but 
You know? Yeah, there's no way they could have pulled that off <laughs> back then. That was, that was still at the beginning of like comic books becoming more than comic books. That was people were still unsure about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was a good. It was a. It was a good show though. A good st written show, but uh, uh, I thought it was some good. There was some clever things they were trying to bring out. They, yeah. Didn't she want to come back for another season at one point? It was like it was her name, Yancey Butler, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, she looked yeah, like she, she had substance abuse problems. Yeah, she she had an alcohol problem. Well, she's talked about she had an alcohol problem, and they they actually had to suspend shooting. I think it was the second season, and let her kind of dry out, and then they brought her back, and they you know finished shooting. But they were just like, yeah, let's let's just, yeah, it's over. <laughs> they just moved on. It was too late. <laughs> yeah, I was like, they probably should have just got another actress. Right from, I mean, but she, I remember she had been on like NYPD Blue and uh, she got hired right off of that. And I mean, she was a beautiful oh, woman. That's in her, right. Yeah, she was also a, have like a hoarse voice, though. Yeah, she, yeah, she sounded like she smoked a lot. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. It's just, yeah, she's got that kind of raspy thing going, but she was hot. And I was like, and you oh, got man. a lot of, she's okay. You got a lot. I thought she was hot. I, you got yeah, a lot of like uh, issues, John. <laughs> I know. But yeah, wait, she wait, definitely did, had a uh, alcohol. Did she problem. have eyelids? I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but she's all right, man. But dang, she wasn't she wasn't all that. And yeah, she sounded like a smoker and a whiskey drinker. I mean, it, look, guys, at some point you can almost smell a person through the screen. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Actually, you know what it was about her? I think she kind of grew on me. Too. At first I was like, eh. But you know what it was? Is she was um she reminded me of like uh Ah, oh, gee, was you, 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 there's a show out now? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's still out. It was called Er Winona Earp or or something Earp. Or oh, something. I know that show. You know what I'm yeah, talking about? The female Earp. Man, who's on that? I know that show. She has the same kind of personality, very gruff, but she's a little more attractive. She's a little more feminine. But uh, but the gal from that, I remember she was like the the prototype for that type of character or that kind of actress for those type of roles. Um. And at the time, I was like, I don't know why I find her attractive. She's awfully, she's awfully offensive. <laughs> the, mm. I'm sure the smoking, you know, breath would go along with that. Would be terrible, but you know, hey, as long as she's got some chewing gum, I'm good. There you go. You got a cigarette. <laughs> oh, she looks rough now. That's a, that's a, yeah, she looks. Yeah, that yeah looks she rough. definitely does not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you gotta finish that drink, <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> Uh, here, here. You need it more than me. Uh, <laughs> but there's some, there's some pictures of her in her prime, and uh, yeah, she could have got it back then. Before. How's this witchblade thing work? Uh, exactly. <laughs> Is that still a cartoon on Saturday mornings? I don't even know. Mm. Uh, this says rough and ready. I mean, <laughs> yeah, she's one minute away from a mug shot. Oh, you by could. the way, hey, Cecil, I, I was like, I, I figured you couldn't come in, but man, I watched uh, one of the videos on your channel uh, this morning while I was writing. It was the, the thing you did on Superman 2. I was in tears, man. It should have me crying, laughing, dude. Uh -oh. I was what is that? Cecil had me in tears when he was talking about... Uh, He's talking about Margo, uh, uh -oh. Margo uh, Kidder as Lois Lane, and I agreed with him because I was like, she was never really that hot to me, and I was just like, is she hot enough where you're gonna give up your superpowers to go <laughs> bang her? I was just, he was, oh god, that's not a flattering picture of, of Yancey right there. That is definitely not. no. They, 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 they did a, um, they must have hired, they must have spent double the budget on the makeup artists in Superman two because for like a split second she was kind of pretty. And yeah, because like, he, he did this one thing where he was like, Yeah, I like the pants there. <laughs> Cecil had me crying. I was cracking up laughing. <laughs> I was just like, Damn, Cecil's crazy, man. I, I love that. it. That sounds funny. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she was, uh, she was definitely, but you know what? It, it's funny though, when you watch the um, I, I'm glad she was, I'm glad she was this lowest lane though, because uh, I kind of did you ever watch the, the behind the scenes stuff of the other, the other actresses that that tried out for the part? Like like uh, the gal from um from Greece. Whoa, John. you got a problem with eyelids? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is not good. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Give me your cast. But see, that's that you can tell because you see some of the younger photos, and you can before she just start letting all that alcohol get on her. Boy, man, that alcohol whoops chicks asses, man. That alcohol will beat your ass. <laughs> Ooh, I'm like, that's what you start. She started looking a little long in the face, and mm. <laughs> just look like she had, uh, you know, been around a couple of guys with wife beaters on. You know, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that always like, looks cool. You think it looks cool when you're at the bar, but after that, it's game over. Yeah, it looks like uh, uh, you know, the cops have been up at your house at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> on a Friday night. You know, it's that yeah, kind of look. There. She's yeah, there. exactly. But there was her a moment. Bar, though. But I mean, there's some other photos of her that I found where she for they for her face got a little too rough. Whew, man, she was smoking and then. I mean, that's the whole. Oh God! Every time John stop, get rid of that. That is horrible. That is a horrible picture. That is a horrible, horrible picture. But don't um, worry, I'm getting another one for you. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Oh, cocaine's a hell of a drug. You're damn right about that retrograde. Yeah, that's why. But yes, you know, if rule of thumb for me when I'm looking at a chick, if I look, if if your face looks like, uh, if your face looks like I could strike a match on it. Then that's not good. Yeah, you, know? you don't like <laughs> veins going through your forehead, Elliot. No. <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny? This is one of those examples where I, I, I have a weird thing. Like I, could, I have a, like a three D vision thing, or, or, or X ray vision thing. Like I can look at someone's skull, and I'm like, oh, that's gonna be a rough person when they get older. <laughs> mm. And those teeth right there tell me a story. Yeah, they look like. What's wrong with my? Teeth, Elliot. You look like a. You sound like a harsh man. They look like, mm. like they were made from the Declaration of Independence. Oh, so yellow. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I used to be hot fire, you know. Witch blade. <laughs> I was the witch blade. <laughs> I was the witch blade. I used to be witch blade. <laughs> and, and now, I was in Wizard Magazine. I was a wizard. I was on the cover of Wizard. They gave me a coffee pot, a coffee, a coffee pot to put over my hand to be yeah. Wishblade. I was on NYPD Blue. Damn it! I, I used to be a cop. Yeah, I was the cop. <laughs> and then I stopped being a cop so I could be a Wishblade. <laughs> and I became a Wishblade. And- Mark Silvestri felt me up on the set of Wishblade one time. Whoa. It was hot. And I liked it. I liked it. It was good. Can it, you want to see my teeth? I got oh, teeth. Man. I got yellow teeth. Oh, Have me a cigarette. Yeah, a cigarette. Hey, John oh, Malin. Hey, yeah. John Malin. Why are your standards so high? Yeah. yeah. Well, look, because, guys, <laughs> it look, you know, we're trying to sell products here. It's true. We're trying to sell movies, TV shows. Um, you know when, right. when when they drew Witchblade in the comic, they were like, you know, A cup, B cup, or D's. Uh, they're like, well, we want to sell. Let's go. With, let's go with these. And uh, you know, I mean, look, this Yancey Butler girl. I don't know. She's like a B, right? Yeah, she didn't have much. Yeah. Yeah. She's hoarse. I mean, her voice. Yeah, she sounds definitely had to rasp people. I think you're being highly judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, so. if if I was like, I don't know, a casting director or something like that. I mean, look, all this stuff goes into play. You are there to sell, sell, and when you're done selling, you got to sell some more. I did sell. It was that's true. Mm-hmm. It was I was the wish blade. <laughs> 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 Oh. I'd like a metal hand or something. <laughs> wow. Force Ghost, uh, Force Ghost, Burt Riddle said she was hot in uh, Hard Target. And I saw that. Yeah, she was in Hard Target with uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, oh, it was very oh. good, huh? Uh-huh. I made out with Jean Claude Van Damme. We did coke between takes. <laughs> it was uh, like Cecil's crack. here. Cecil. Hello, darling. It's Yancey. <laughs> John Claude Van Zandt was a beautiful man. You know, he punched me in the throat. 
It's probably not. But not the outside of the throat. Oh, shit. Oh. Yancy, what, do you have oh. tape on your camera? Your oh. camera's on, Yancy. Oh, I do have tape. I'm sorry. I, I, I haven't put my face on yet this morning. <laughs> oh, man. She's going to me crying, man. Jesus. What time is this? It's already 5 a.m. Mm. Christ. I need a drink. Oh. I used to be the witch blade. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. God damn it. Uh, Where the hell are my luckies? Uh, uh, it, it was like Yancey and those two sisters from The Simpsons, man. It was like, uh, oh, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that voice. Oh, man. Patty, so- Patty and Thelma. Oh. Yeah. We oh. I, I drive down to <laughs> North Carolina with them every once in a while and pick up a U haul. Full of uh, cigarettes. No, you don't pay tax down there. I, I met a woman in, one time about three years ago, and she looked like uh, Patty and Selma from The Simpsons. And I said, eh, maybe sleeping with a guy wouldn't be the worst thing to do now. <laughs> doing that. I was just like, I couldn't do it. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of things I would do, but I would not do that. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. Uh, yeah, I, I, I almost... Uh, they almost made me try alternative lifestyle. I was like, oh man. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Shit, that must be my agent. <laughs> <laughs> You've been fired, darling. No, she hasn't been hired. <laughs> you, you, know, you talk tough. You talk tough, uh, Antonio, but in the right lighting and with uh, you know, a bottle of wild turkey in you. We didn't have a good time. We'd have a sexy party, my friend. A little, oh. Boone's, a little Boone's Farm party. Oh, man. I gargle glass in the morning. I'm the Jack witch. Jack Daniels. Mm. Nobody turns Witchblade down. Nobody. <laughs> oh. She oh. should do conventions. That'd be hilarious. I'm surprised she doesn't, actually. There's still uh-huh. people that would, that would take the autograph. They'd be like, yeah, you were on like uh, Witchblade for like Two and a half seasons. I remember that. Yeah. Would you do it? Would you do it, Yancey? Would you do it? Mm. What's that? Do a convention? <laughs> yes. Of course, I would do a con- convention. Why wouldn't I? At her table. It's so cute. Why would I? I'd love to be in a booth next to you, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be signing right next to you in Chicago, Elliot. I, know. I got a funny feeling. It's mm-hmm. happening. It would be hilarious if she shows up because I was like, oh, oh. Man, she screwed her career up. Oh. Oh. I just want to be loved. Is that so wrong? Yeah. That so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Tell my so mother the aliens are coming. Mm. Yeah. I'm switching to the jewel. The what? That's an electronic red joke. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so when uh when they gave you know when when they created in the comic Witchblade, you know, what what they were thinking in the design process is how do we maximize sales? And when it comes to casting, you know, the, the same stuff applies. You know, good face, uh thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, She's designed with, you know. I'm a method actor, Jonathan. Johnny, I'm a method actor. I put the witch in Witchblade, my friend. I thought you used meth. I thought that's what you meant. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, the, she put the meth in method actor. <laughs> I put the meth in method acting, and I put the witch in Witchblade. Yeah, but they start. then they start throwing things out. They're like, uh, well, you know, we really don't need the D-cup. Matter of fact, we don't need to show boobs at all. We'll put her in a t-shirt and just make sure no one gets any good view of her boobs. We'll put a jacket on her. That was horrible. That was my that was idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was your idea? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so right away, you're, again, you're, you're cutting the knees off your own product. This wasn't a character that, you know. You, had, you can't hide a flask in a t-shirt. I needed the jacket. <laughs> That's true. 
Oh, damn. Hey, guys. Oh, man. Oh, oh damn. This is this is a classic stream, man. I love it. Yeah, but nobody would have would have bought the comic if they designed the character to, like she looked in the TV show. Right with the leather jacket. That, that's yeah, with the leather jacket. I was like, because I was I was like, are they not gonna do the full costume? Because I was like, she's a little flat chested, does. So like, yeah, they could have still. I mean, she had a at that point, she still had a good face. You know? Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, the jawline was the only thing they got right. I'm in talks right now for a pretty yeah. major, uh, a major part right now. Uh, I'm gonna play Mumra. <laughs> <laughs> Thundercats. Oh. oh Wait, do you, think, <laughs> you think she had a hard time in uh, rehab? Uh, in rehab, well, from what I understood, she went more than once. Yeah, they yeah. tried to help her a couple times because they they um after guys after don't the talk about her like don't talk about her like she's not here. Yeah, I <laughs> it's not that bad. I met a wonderful girl in there, Amy Winehouse. I've got to mm. look how she's doing. I haven't spoke to her in a while. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh man! Oh my God. I heard you guys were going to do an album together. I don't want to go to rehab. No, no, no. <laughs> Wow. Wow. That is, that is funny. Oh my God, man. But, uh, oh, God. I love Cecil. I need to do a podcast with Cecil. I need to do a podcast with Cecil. I actually need a female to do a sexy party with, you know, Sasha's always so damn busy. I can't. You know, not I can't. Unbelievably free. <laughs> I need oh. Yancey. Can can I get Yancey Butler to be my co-host on Sexy Party? <laughs> that would be great. That would be awesome. I've got great just... stories that'll make your skin crawl. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It'll, it'll make... <laughs> How would your stories compare to uh <laughs> to uh, leaving Neverland? Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sexy party with trans Cecil. That would be awesome. <laughs> oh, no, be I, believe, the room. I believe Michael. He has an honest face. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. He looks like a good friend of mine. We were supposed to play, it was going to be a big crossover movie, big time. He was going to play Skeletor, and I was going to play Mumra. Wow. But everything went south in 2009 when that poor man died of being put to sleep by an anesthesiologist, as as people do. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's crazy, see. It's crazy, Yancy. It was, it's beautiful times. We're going to be we're gonna make movies together. I, I don't know why they needed a horse tranquilizer to put him in the bed every night. I mean, it's, it's like... <laughs> It's not like that guy had a guilty conscience and just couldn't go to sleep on his own. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was good. They're still arguing on my YouTube right now. I've got so many people coming. It's like I, I've done those Michael Jackson videos. That The one the one I did, it's almost at like 9,000 views, and it's gotten over 300 and something comments on it. Everybody's like, Michael's a pedo. Michael's innocent. Screw you. They're going back and forth. Just, I was like, every, I was like, but every time I look and see how much the video's earning, I was like, please keep arguing. Please. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I need Michael's that check. not a podiatrist, first of all. He was a wonderful singer and, and dancer. That wasn't fair, Cecil, what you did to me the other night. I was not prepared. I was still hopped up on medications and stuff. I was sleepy. And I, I, I was like, what did I say? Did I say something about Michael? What? Wait a minute. You were, you were on meds and you didn't share? No. What do you have? <laughs> I can't with you, Yancy. This You have a substance abuse problem. Yancy needs Percocet. <laughs> Percocet. Molly Percocet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. You know what's nice? Nice little uh, Vicodin and red wine. And then you watch some old Witch Blade episodes. And you think about <laughs> what? Are those available on Blu-ray now? I know there's some clips on YouTube. It's on VHS. <laughs> it's all 
awesome. I'm wow. back. That's what happens. That's what happens with the Witchblade. She struggled. People get, people get angry when, when I bring up Michael Jackson every time. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> you know, Yancey, you, Yancey is of the belief that Michael Jackson is um, guilty. No, he's innocent. He had, he had the mind of a child. Like... Oh. Uh, like Blaster from Master Blaster. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Oof. Damn. Oof. I was like, Cecil is too funny. I love Cecil. I'm about to have a coughing fit. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, take it. Take it, Cecil. I've got the black lung. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonder... You know, she wasn't able to carry Witchblade to even higher links. Well, <laughs> all right. So if we could go back in time. Yeah. Oh, she, Nancy just had, I mean, Yancy had to leave. Is she a treasure or what? I love her. Uh -huh. Yeah. That was well, Emmy Award know. winning stuff from Yancy. She's one of my old Barfly friends. Love her. Yeah. Who could, who could have been a good, uh, what's her name after all? A witchblade. Oh, D Denise Richards. Of that time, yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I would have loved, yeah, Denise, because she had fake boobs and everything. Yeah, really? Yeah, she probably would have been a good movie version of her for sure. Yeah, I mean, she can't act for shit, but who cares? Well, uh, hello, did you see Starship Troopers? Yeah. <laughs> my, my voice is wrecked now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Came over. Yeah, I definitely saw Starship Troopers and a couple of the little direct se video sequels or whatever they're doing. Um, people are saying uh, she would have been better as Fathom. That that's pretty good too. Yeah, she. Oh yeah, Fathom. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, still have that. I still have my first issue of Fathom somewhere in my long box. Do those guys plan on doing anything with those those properties at all? Are they going to make movies out oh. of that stuff? That was Rezi Kai who said Denise Richards as. Fathom. I don't want to take credit for that. Oh, I, I would imagine. Uh, that's Aspen, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. wonder why some of that stuff hasn't been made yet. I, oh. Well, I, I kept hearing that they had optioned Fathom, and it just, you know, you always hear, oh, this got optioned, and they never do anything with it. Yeah. Well, how are they going to do it now? Everybody's got to be fully dressed at all times. Yeah, no, right? Aquaman, Aquaman might help a movie like Fathom get some wheels was that was yeah. mira running around half naked he was he was but was mira no she yeah, was no. both yeah so it's a movie with a hot chick in the water and she's not even in a bikini boo a full body suit yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. art <laughs> you think that if 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 aquaman was made in the 90s how small would the bikini be oh man she oh, had a ball, oh boy! It was a thong and maybe like, you know, two seashells glued on her tits. That was yeah, the age that, of that was, it. that was the age. Of, it was all kinds of sexiness. Now they got her in a full body suit running around. Great. She's in a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> but why are you wearing a wetsuit? <laughs> don't, you, don't you live at the bottom of the ocean? Mm. Well, it's more comfortable. She's it's Yancy's time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I was uh, just double in that movie for a seahorse. <laughs> oh yeah, with that face, the jaw of justice. No, but I look, think about it. They're, how are they going to do a fathom, you know, uh, Aspen movie? She's like. Naked in a bikini the whole time, people would lose their mind. Yeah, that is a, you know, it's just like you you would hear that they had been uh, trying to option like Lady Death, all those bad. I remember all those bad girl chicks from from that era. I used to be a Look, lizard all the time. If if you did a Lady Death movie, Lady Death might be a little too well endowed to where people might see it, you know, a little bit more as camp, I guess. But if you did a witchblade or a fathom and you went all in 
with the budget and you're like, you know, we, we're, we're going to show as much skin as we want, um, you know, and, and still keep our whatever PG 13 rating. Look, it would do gangbusters, but you have to, you have to, well, I mean, on the surface level, you still have to have a good actor. You still have to have a good script. You, you, you still have to have, you know, everything from top to bottom, but on the bare bones of the visual, if you get, you know, look, I mean, the, the highest rated whatever show in the Middle East in what are the 90s was like Baywatch. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. yeah. It's, awesome. it's not because yeah. Pamela Anderson's a great actress. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's because they, they're seeing forbidden fruit all over the place. I went to Spain as a kid in the early 90s with my family. We were on Spain in vacation and it had like where we were uh, had like one channel coming in. And it was just Baywatch in English. Mm -hmm. Wow. 24 hours a day. Yeah. They love the Hoff. In a complete loop. Anytime you turned on the TV on that channel, Baywatch. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I look. We read those issues pretty quick at that villa. You know, uh, us men, we're we're simple creatures. You know, turns out. You know, we we like to look at women. you know, in bathing suits. And, you know, there's women that like to look at women in bathing suits. And, you know, you do a movie, which is a hot chick in a bathing suit. But, I mean, it, it's it's got a good story. It's got a good plot. It's got good acting. All the goods in it. Look, man, they people, they will they did, come. They did Baywatch the movie a couple of years ago. Name name actors in it. Wait, uh, name actors that are girls in it. Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't even sell it. They just sold that Zach. Uh, Efron, Efron guy. Yeah. yeah. That's so. How ridiculous is that? There was a Baywatch movie. And the only two people we can name is Zach Efron and The Rock. Well, there was the. <laughs> actually, I I saw it for the gal. What would, I can't remember her name though. I don't exactly. know exactly. I, I didn't know her before. <laughs> She's that blue-eyed, dark-haired girl. I just remember her. Yeah, like a thousand other blue-eyed, dark-haired uh, girls. So if you're doing a Baywatch movie, it should have been. You should have been banged over the head with that, and been like, you should have been named like. Five girls in that movie like that. Alexandra Daddario. I think uh, she's also the chick that was on uh She was in Baywatch? Always yeah. so. all right. That she's amazing. I didn't even know she oh, was. Oh, yeah, she was smoking hot. They didn't even put her on the commercials. They just put the rock and Zach Efron. Like, who gives yeah. a shit? So I didn't go yeah. see it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I watched it at I watched it at home and it was yeah, you didn't miss shit, man. Yeah, it didn't have a sea monster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right? I mean, we would have saw it if it had a sea monster. They actually tried to have a plot. That's what was throwing me off. I was like, are they fucking sick? They got a plot? They yeah, actually lifeguards. What's nah. the plot? Yeah, I was like, well, that's, was, that's was, was it. up all the beachfront property. He was like, uh, he was on the city council and they and uh, they were working together. I was like, are y'all sick? Yeah, Lex Luthor, Superman 1, basically. Yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's buying up all the beachfront <laughs> property, and then they're like running. They're running uh, some kind of weird crystal meth, or some kind of weird drug through the beach, and and the rocks character is like investigating who's these, who's sending all these drugs through the beach. I was like, oh god, okay. <sighs> and yeah, Zach Efron's character had been like an Olympic athlete or something, and and he had gotten on drugs like Yancey, and, <laughs> and uh, he, uh you know, this was his punishment was to become a lifeguard. <laughs> that was that's what it was. I was like, yeah. my God, they just uh... retro graphics says Vanessa Hudgens as Witchblade might work. It, isn't she like five foot two or something? Yeah, it looks a little anorexic to me too. Yeah, yeah guys. Yeah, and got to be a bigger chick, a little yeah, more. Yeah, I mean, you need athletic. tall. Look, I, I don't. Hollywood is afraid of tall people, but look, your heroes, the people you look up to, they're higher. They're bigger than five foot two. Um, case in point, the dude from Star Wars when he played Ap- uh, Apocalypse. Oh yeah, he did this short. Oh yeah, he's a short. Like, dude. how can you be a guy named Apocalypse and you're like five six? Lighting. Uh, <laughs> I mean, did Apocalypse ever look five six in the comic? Well, he just got cast in Doom too. That guy, uh, he's yeah. gonna be in Doom with uh, what Batista? I know Batista's gonna be in there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I mean, they they spent a ton of money on the cast because they they definitely got all star cast. But yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to bow out. So the wife is coming home. So yeah, I gotta wrap it up too. I gotta wrap right. it up too. Yeah, Let's yeah. Good well, talk to all right, guys, thanks for having me on. I'm glad you brought brought me up. Yes, he's <laughs> making a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Can't Liam. Wait. That was great. Thank you guys so much, everybody in the chat. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate all you guys. I uh, updated the the um, the description to include a uh, brand by Antonio Bryce and Kanan White, and also Trixie Kane Blood Reaper by Nasser Rabadi. Uh, do you guys have anything else? See, so you haven't worked on anything yet, right? Anything that you're soliciting? Got anything. Okay. Um, uh, Cecil is working on getting me to Vegas to take uh, Nasser's virginity. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. Uh Yancy, right. wow, man. John, yeah. what do you get anything yet from you, right? A carton of uh, no, go go check out Trixie Kane and uh Tales from the Gate or Tales from Beyond the Gates by the John Gate. Dillard. Uh I, I did a a a, a one pager in that and Tales from Beyond the Stacks. I did the cover for that. So check that those out. Professor Geeks, uh he was on. Yeah, back yep. then. Yeah. Yep. And check out uh scum dogs. So that's so, a, oh, I need to check that. I've been hearing a couple. Everyone needs to check out Scum Dogs when it comes out, hundred percent. Right. Well, yeah, Chaotic Flux. Check check out Chaotic Flux. That yeah. guy needs to. He needs some help. Chaotic Flux. Uh, Crystal McGee. Uh, check out my stream from yesterday, everybody. Yeah, okay. check out Ethan Cecil's stream from yesterday. Yeah. Go to about start at about the one hour mark. That's where the fun begins. All right, there you go. Uh, all right, thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate the uh, the the camaraderie. Uh, you guys in the chat have been fantastic. I want to thank Arthur Brown for the great job uh, uh, for moderating, and also uh, somebody else. Who else is in here moderating? I saw somebody else quickly, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I appreciate you guys. Go uh, read comics and enjoy yourselves. Watch some movies, but be careful what you watch because some of it's bad for your health. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Flat Earth is real. <laughs>